the Skyward Dive has been a flip of the coin sometimes for TSM. They find a spot and now they're griefing. They want to take the prime position here. They know Northeast is where you've got to go here. Smokes are down, but they've got the Digi Threats. Digi Threats. Perfect to see through those smokes. Like you say, Reps picks up one, Verholz picks up another, and TSM are looking hungry for it right now. LG, you are gone. Match point leaves us with two teams as Kashera makes the play. Kashera for Europe gets the shots in, but no shield break as now the fight goes down. So important that you get the damage here, and it's done! TSM up in the skies, house goes down from the heavens! London belongs to TSM! That was it, the moment in split one that made history for TSM to finally hoist that trophy yet again, and it wasn't given. It was taken. What a moment we had at the Copper Box Arena in London just a month ago. And now, guess what? It is a brand new split, and it is time to do it all over again. Can anybody stop them? Will someone dethrone this dynasty that has cemented their place in the annals of Apex Legends history? We're about to find out. It's so good to see all of you again. Welcome back. It's been a little bit of a hiatus, and you know we love to take our time to tell you all the good stuff so it can be a surprise right at the end. And guess what? We are hyped and starting this Apex Legends Global Series Split 2 with the same momentum that we ended our Split 1 playoffs. My name is Randy. I will be hosting this show to kick it off. And alongside two of the best in the business, two great peers of mine, let's introduce them for you to kick this thing off. First off, Spider Tiff. She is back and in the building, Tiff. What a moment that was in London and so amazing to kick off another split of Apex. I think I remember exactly where I was in the Copper Box Arena the moment Ascend and TSM went at it and my heart was absolutely racing and I can't wait to go on the journey of split to regular season leading down to those playoffs. I couldn't be more excited to be here so thank you so much Rain. And you know what, Tiff, it is a journey. You've been incredible but also these teams, they go through so much during the season to get to that moment. But of course, I got to introduce our third member of the team today, Vicky Kitty. Talk to me a little bit about that culmination of the journey, being in person in London to witness TSM make history. You literally had to be there. I had goosebumps just re-watching that, hearing Onset go, how comes in from the heavens? I can't relive that moment enough. I can't wait to see the action that we have in store for us for Split 2 here. And Mia coming in hot, especially after that last fight action that we saw in playoffs between Ascend versus TSM. And that is going to be the story, right? Is Amiya as a region going to step up and, and raise that trophy again? Will we see the likes of Dark Zero and, and will we see TSM continue to be the land champions? Will someone else from our other regions, which we will keep you updated on, by the way, during some of these shows, start to show they will be the ones hoisting the trophies for APAC or maybe even South America? All of that to unfold over the course of Split 2. But we kick it off today again with Spider Tiff and Vicky Kitty. My name is Rande. And, you know, though we've got a lot of players and teams to talk about, maybe one of the most important changes that's happened between February 5th and that moment to now March 11th is the Season 16 patch notes. Revelry introduced a completely new class system to Apex Legends. And I know a lot of you know Apex at a very detailed level, but even the pros, even players who have put hours, thousands of hours into this game, were curious as to how this would shake things up. And boy, oh boy, it has been fantastic. From Assault, Skirmisher, Recon, Controller, and Support, we have seen adjustments to how these characters have been played in a brilliant way by the design team at Respawn to introduce more specific roles for these classes, taking away the ability to scan survey beacons for Valkyrie, giving her and the skirmishers a new passive to see what's happening in the care packages, as well as looking at recon characters, being able to get a brand new ability to be able to see where these teams are when they scan it for 20 seconds. All of that's being folded, but Tiff, I want to talk a little bit about some of the specific legends that got changes too, starting with Wraith. I mean, Wraith obviously has been there since the beginning of Apex Legends and has been gone through such a journey, right? We talk about that tactical, that slight, slight delay. Nothing was touched on that, but it's all about the portal. And we talk about the distance, right? It was completely doubled. So think about the end game utilization for Wraith. I think that's where if you are going to choose to play her, which we may see some of our teams do today, you are gonna find the success there. Cause as a skirmisher, yes, you have the perk ability to go ahead and scan what's in the those care packages, but 
As for a team player, not so much. She's usually utilized to get those cheeky LOSs. If you're in a fight, you know she'll extend out to the right, try to find a good angle and put a lot of damage down. But that portal for endgame scenarios is going to be mission critical if she is utilized. One of the best characters, most iconic. I think we can all agree, Tiff, in Apex Legends history. But Vicky, there's been other changes, maybe bigger changes to this season in one specific character, and that is the rise of Catalyst. Absolutely, and we gotta talk about why. With the controller class rework, Catalyst has basically been a mainstay pawn in a lot of these compositions. Almost 100% pick rate at times to lead up for this weekend, so I'm expecting to see Catalyst nearly on every team. She helps benefit you if you have a Bangalore, she helps benefit you if you have a Seer, and you guys are gonna see exactly why soon. But I'm excited to see how this is gonna play out between different regions that we have exposed throughout this weekend, especially while we kick off Amiya today. A character, Raven, uh, notably a, a coach who had kind of risen to fame through his ability to guide TSM to that championship, mentioned when Catalyst came out, was a good character. Maybe the whole world is starting to see it. Maybe it shows Raven's got a good eye on these meta changes. But there's other legends that uh, the likes of those coaches and characters have been trying out. That, that would be Horizon as well, who also, Tiff, in Season 16, got some adjustments to try to bring her in line with some of the other legends, as she has been a standout for many seasons. I mean, you think about Horizon's utilage when you put them on a team, right? Typically a very heavy fragging style of legend that you're gonna pair with the player. Now, when you adjust the aim inside that gravity lift and you kind of have a little bit more recoil or, you know, yeah. it's tough, right? So now you have to look at the gravity lift as a means to transition your team throughout the verticality. And I would see that more on Stormpoint, right? Right. Really up down type of map, trying to get your team onto a higher ground to be able to negotiate the fights that way. So I wouldn't see her more as a fragging character unless you're typically more comfortable with that. But she might actually move into an anchoring type of role mm. that you would see in that composition. Yeah, still very good for aggressive players. Still incredible mobility. We've been watching uh, many players still put her to good effect, but she has received that small nerf to the ability to shoot in the air with some negative recoil, as you mentioned, Tiff. Let's move on, though, to the final character who had been kind of a, a mainstay almost as a, a tertiary pick, right? A, a third kind of flex pick that maybe wasn't the mainstay of a lot of rosters, but had uh, that second pick tier uh, involved. Now I see Vicky with Crypto kind of losing the ability to scan beacons and see where the zone is and having a different style. Is there going to be the same level of Crypto play in this split? Well, you know, let's talk about the impact that Crypto had previously, Rain. Crypto's EMP being able to negate the Seer ult was also incredibly important to also clear out Watson fences. So even though he may not be able to scan where that next ring is going to be pulling, now that he's moved over to Recon alongside Bloodhound and Seer and Advantage, Crypto is still going to be able to gather the information on where everyone is on the map. Basically, yeah. what you guys see in Kings Canyon in the map room, Crypto can now do that alongside those other characters to determine where people are going to be rotating, what spots are congested, where is that final circle going to be pulling if you don't have a character yeah. that is a controller character like the Catalyst. So I think that's also going to be very utilized here, especially Namiya. I mean, the first player that comes to mind has to be Kashera. So it's going to be interesting to see how Crypto is <laughs> going to be used like that. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, IGLs, I've seen uh, almost some incredible IGL calls just from getting that map room information from the survey beacons, as they're called, for crypto to be able to scan because it just is, it's so telling. Even if you don't know where the ring is, if you see seven teams in a building in Skyhook, you're thinking, okay, this is probably a Skyhook ring, right? And that allows you to get the information by proxy and also decide your path on how to maneuver there. Lots of legend talk, lots of meta talk. We're going to try to introduce this more and more in these shows for you high-level viewers who want to know about these things and take them into your own games. But let's bring a little bit of attention to what was last season's legend pick because these were the legends that stood out. It was Valkyrie. It was Watson. Tiff, give me your reaction to this. And if you think maybe we're going to see this again or will there be some shifts in this chart? I mean, it's really no surprise that Valkyrie boasted such a high pick rate. Almost every single meta or like legend composition kind of worked Valkyrie into that. Now, that's mostly because she had the ability to hit those beacons and get that ring knowledge. But moving her over under the skirmisher class, she's only going to be able to use the perk of finding out what's inside those care packages. And depending on how you want to utilize that for your own benefit, it doesn't really affect the team as a whole. It can if you see, oh, hey, there's a Kraber ring one, right? Like. We already know someone's got a Kraber, yep. it's grayed out. Someone's got it. You think about the teams that are around that care package that may have been able to grab that. You can keep and use that for your information. But other than that, 
it just goes to show you that the controller class is yeah. going to be so much more viable. And in my opinion, Catalyst is the strongest controller legend that we have right now. This Catalyst, maybe a little Rampart. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have decided as a talent team to bring to you who are watching the ALGS right now as an information on what we think will be the current meta. Tiff, you had mentioned 42% of people seem to be playing this in their games in terms of the Catalyst, the Seer, and the Valkyrie. We know there's a ton of value to it. Uh, Vicky, a quick thought on this before we move into what might be a counter for these legends. I think right now with what we've been seeing in scrims between the Catalyst wall and the Sierra ult, it's proven to be very dominant. I think the one thing that we see changing up a little bit is sometimes the Valkyrie and the Catalyst, if you want to try to use Seer as that mainstay legend that you want on your team, whether mm. it be the Bangalore Smokes combination with this Seer ult, or even Valkyrie making their way out and then introducing the Bangalore Seer and Catalyst, that would be crazy. But that's yeah. why we've been seeing this so consistently so far, and I don't think this is going to change anytime soon rain well tiff that means teams have to not only know how to play it they have to know how to counter it here's what we've got introduced to us from mark hatcher on set shout out to give the great call in the beginning he added this as his thoughts are what i think is or what he thinks as well and i want to get your thoughts Tiff, as what might be a counter to this style the fuse the horizon and the seer give us your thoughts Tiff, on on just a reaction to this counter pick potentially can we just note that Seer is inside the counter pick and in the other legend <laughs> competition? Because Seer, yeah, exactly. Seer is <laughs> counting her himself. I, I think Fuse is a really great pickup if you have that 50 50 contest off drop because you can just essentially utilize the knuckle clusters and just kind of influx and get your space outlined early on to make sure that you can essentially out loot the other team that is contesting you. Yeah. Now, how it's going to work to kind of counter catalyst. Uh, Mark, I want to talk to you more about this because I have, I have some questions. <laughs> um, and I can't, it's so great because, you know, sometimes you're going to be right, you're going to be wrong. We're all going to figure this out as we head into the games today, which are coming right up. But before we get into the games, you got to talk about who's playing them. Season two brings to it new teams that have qualified from challengers and the LCQ who have then also made their way here in an EMEA. You could see this roster, Vicky, some great names on here. Yeah, highlighting all the teams here in the participating group A, B, and C, even though we're just seeing group A and B today. Gotta talk about Aurora, a team that usually brings out unorthodox compositions, not looking as strong as I was expecting them to, maybe not adjusting to the meta as quick as they usually do. Um, just based off of my observation on scrims, highlighting the teams that I also am expecting to really pop off, E6. I'm expecting Horizon Union to come through, Eternal. Of course, we can't ignore Alliance, KCP, Ascend, start a fight. So so many amazing teams. I mean, Vex as well. It's going to be a really good time here in EMEA. So many heavy hitters after coming out of their performance in land want to keep that momentum going into split two. And let's also pay special attention to Group C, which is going to be waiting to play on Sunday. So A and B will be our participants today, Tiff. And that means when you take a look at these teams here, this is the matchup we'll be seeing for six games of Apex Legends action today. I mean, look at this list. Could we have asked for a better way to start off Beautiful. Split 2 than like putting these two groups against each other? Vex Gaming, you know, they had an interesting journey throughout Split 1 and going into the playoffs. I feel like they realized the style of the playstyle they were making, that really hard edge, that aggressive, you know, prioritizing eliminations over maybe the zone play. They're going in and making a lot of changes here for Split 2. Ascend found a lot of success in Split 1 playoffs, but they weren't the ones hoisting the trophy by the end of that, and they want to. I feel like when you're so close to having that for your team, you've got to run it back. Well, Vicky, Tiff, we always pick teams that stand out to us before we start this broadcast. I'm going to start with you and go right back, Tiff. Who do you have your eye on today? Look, there were a lot of people that had standout performances at split one playoffs, but I want to talk about Pioneers and their utilization of that. They just picked up Zane, who was previously competing under Jay Ling, so it's going to be rounding out the trio of Nasky, Surdell, and now Zane. The question is, how will this trio work? They've got a little bit of consistency now because moving into every land thus far, they have had to pick up a sub. Shout out to Max Strafey, still a sub for the KCP team, not dropped from the roster for anything performance related, still a standout character. But the utilization of Zane and how they can integrate that play style for KCP, we're going to see how it goes out for them today. And I can't wait to see the journey of Zane and KCP.
Honestly, Tiff, Zayn is an insane fragger. And when I think about teams that have been able to perform, I got to talk about Ascend out here. Our Portuguese squad, fresh off of getting third at land for split one playoffs this season, has kept their consistency alive. Ascend, who basically dominated all the EMEA ALGS leading up to their land performance, their official coach now, Null, really helped rally this team's success throughout their dominating performance. It's been amazing to see Kashira's take, um, basically taking his IGLing to new heights. And I got to even meet Lufka and person after wrapping up land and i spoke to him a little bit about how frag heavy he is for such a patient team he basically laughed shrugged it off and said something similar to how his team really helps him stay grounded and their synergy lets him stay in tune with this passive aggressive play style so i'm really excited to see what ascend's got in store for us especially after coming up with a dominating performance yeah can they go back to back in terms of their dominance in EMEA? we're gonna find out but a team that's gonna be standing in their way big time and maybe even more big time in part due to this meta and their ability to try new things ahead of the curve is Alliance. They stood out at land because of Yuki's incredible performance, Hockey's leadership, and Mandy's super subness. Yeah, that's a word. We're making it a word. Super subness. Mandy went crazy for this team, but it also showed that the core of the squad is so good. And with the young effect back in the mix, this is going to be a dangerous squad. Not only that, though, they have tried to do a different counter. No fuse for them. Rampart. Will this work? Rampart in high level, they have been trying it on Hockeys and on Yuki, combined with Skier and Valkyrie. They feel they've got something, so they're betting on themselves. This could be Alliance's season to finally break through. We'll see. And of course, if you have any other stories that you think you want to follow or that you're caring about in the ALGS, whether it's EMEA or North America, guess what? The award-winning multi-view is back and available for our fans. That means you can have your own watch party or you can just watch any POV that you want. See all the action, see the rotations from your angle that you care about and the stories that make you love the ALGS, you can have all unlimited access to. ALGS your way by using multi-view. Check out our command center down at the bottom of the page and go ahead and access that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so excited to have you with us in the chat, wherever you're watching around the world. I hope you're hype. I hope you're feeling good because the games are about to start. We are kicking it off on World's Edge. We'll do three there as usual. Switch it up to Storm Point to end the day. Who can start strong? Who can finish strong? Who will be our winners in day one of EMEA? and set the tone for the rest of Split 2. It's possible that the champions that will be hoisting the trophy at the end of it, when this is all said and done, are playing in these groups today, are going to showcase that they're ahead and they're better, but we'll have to find out and that'll be up to them. But I won't be calling the action, I'll just be here in between. We've got two of the best in the business to do it. And of course, let's throw it to them to kick off game one. It's Spider Tip and Vicky Kitty. Take it away. Thank you so much, Rain Day. This is going to be an exciting journey, and I couldn't be more excited to be alongside you, Vicky. I mean, we're kicking things off World's Edge, and it seems like just a few weeks ago, we were standing in the Copper Box Arena watching all of those teams fight for that championship trophy, and now we're going back to the beginning. Tiff, I can't believe we're here already for Split 2. I feel like it, it took forever, but now that we're actually here, it felt like it was just yesterday that we were seeing all the hype from the audience, from the players, really pop off in the Copper Box Arena. Arena, but now we're jumping into game number one to start off the EMEA region within the ALGS split to year three performance here. I'm so excited. I also love the fact that uh, Rain basically touched up on Alliance. I also want to give a quick shout out. I know we talked talked a little bit about it during uh, LAN, but you know, Hockey's is the first non-NA player to a thousand ALGS kills of all time. So again, special shout out to Hockey's for that. As we dig right now into our first game, I'm so excited to be alongside you, Tiff. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun journey. I think that was a really cool thing to highlight. He had actually noted that throughout those first 1,000 kills, being the first EMEA player, he said he's going to get to 2,000 way quicker than he got to 1,000. Oh, cool. So excited to see that journey. Meanwhile, Pioneer's on your screen with a little bit of the map view overhand to the right. You can see we may see a contest a little bit later down in Lava City and Big Mod. That's going to be Lasique de France taking on Foot Esports. And, you know, I reached out to Inc., one of the team members at Foot, and talked about kind of bringing in Liffin. Like talking about that and how they were going into that contest feeling and they were kind of like you know what we've got this we are feeling a lot more confident we are going to play our game and you know just that's what we're gonna do but kcp going to hit that ring console nasty that IGL and, you know, I've seen Zane on the Valkyrie. It makes sense, right? Freeing them up to be the fragger that they're meant to be. So 
Gonna see that mainstay legend composition we were talking about. Yeah, it's the it's Catalyst, amazing. Seer, and Valkyrie that we're okay. seeing from KCP side of things. This is the team that picked up Zayn, a standout performance in playoffs where he was popping off. He was wiping out squads as a solo left to right and even made his way into that final circle. It was insane, but now lose. taking a look at where the circle is going to be pulling now that we've gotten some scans on the ring consoles, looks like we could potentially see the circle end up in the middle bins. If you know what I'm talking about, Tiff, kind of north side of where the vault room is, you're going to see it between Overlook and by those bins to the left side of where you see currently Bamboo going to rotating to. We've seen that end up there a few times. And if it's not there, could even pull toward the rocks to the north side of Overlook. So a lot of these teams already getting ahead of the game. You can see Ascend making their way over. And 2R1C already in that early fight, actually rocking the fuse that we were highlighting from Onset's pick. You know, I'm really excited to see it. Drovic on the caustic. You can see they're actually utilizing a building that's already had a catalyst reinforced door and they're just not gonna break it. Some teams you'll see come in and they will break all of the doors in a building if they're running a catalyst because they have the passive ability to go ahead and reinforce that. But making that early rotation in and running the charge rifle to be able to poke for your team is going to be mission critical, especially if you wanna rotate quickly and you're still on white shields. And with their composition, they're one of the few teams rocking the Wraith. We, we Even with those buffs that we've seen from the Wraith, we haven't really been seeing Wraith within a lot of these other legend compositions from a lot of the other teams that we've been able to witness in, in scrims. Of course, we've also were thinking about the same thing with Watson, but unfortunately here, Pylon doesn't block the Catalyst wall out here. And with Lackluster Wraiths playing this move, playing Bunker down inside the building with the, with the Caustic Barrels is definitely the big thing to do here if you're gonna predict the circle to be pulling here. Really interesting dynasty on your screen. The former Rats roster, Sorbin, Tolkien, and Mania, they've already made their way over into Overlook. And I really like this positioning here for them. And you saw just recently someone had scanned them. We talk about the perks that certain legends, that recon characters, they have the ability to scan those beacons, which will give you essentially that snapshot you were talking about. But it's going to notify every single team that you were scanned and then thus give up the location of that team. You can see it right there. Scanned by Survey Beacon. You can open up your map and you can say, I got scanned exactly from this position. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. How many times do you think these teams are going to get that notification too from the teams that are going to be able to get that scan on who is in the vicinity, where the other squads are going to be rotating from on the other sides of the map? I like this position that we're seeing from Ascend playing off the low ground. We're talking about Crypto. What's his impact now with so many other teams opting to go in a different direction with the Seer, Catalyst, and Valkyrie? Ascend is going to be playing on the low ground. You see the EMP is going to be able to farm Kashira's shield out here too. All that extra damage and also extra pressure to force out this team to use way more shield cells when they're lacking in loot. Doesn't look like they got a low on the opposing team, which a lot of final circle teams like to rock. We've seen it already in playoffs. We've seen it in the past last year too. But a lot of these teams are basically going to have to stay put here for this final circle. Ooh, another utilization of a new thing here in Season 16 that Ascend has in the hands of Lufka is going to be that Nemesis. We didn't really get to talk a whole lot of it, but the addition of that assault rifle, that four-round burst weapon, is absolutely insane. I know for a fact that every time people are rotating, if you just get caught out into the open for too long and someone's got a Nemesis looking down the side on you, you are not going to last very long. But just look at this overarching free cam shot. Shout out to our observers for giving us a lay of the land of where a lot of the teams are kind of nesting up. Ascend, I'm really digging the position. I don't think this would be playable if they didn't have the Watson to be able to kind of anchor off the space utilization of the fences. That allows kind of Dynasty to play upstairs of them. But if they were to drop down and maybe take some pop shots, they're not going to be able to nade spam because they do have the interceptor pylon up. Yeah, to break down their positioning too, it's a little difficult to get a, a really reliable catalyst wall uh, underneath where they're at with so much obstruction to deal with as well. Not really smart move, so a good on Ascend to stay put, stay on the low ground right there too while overlooking another squad that's right in front of them. They know another team is playing right on top and we can expect other teams, while they make their rotation away from Big Mod, away from Geyser, are going to be meeting them up either in the tunnel caves or off to the left side on the south side of Overlook. Taking a look at Fire Beavers though, I've been really interested to see how Fiverr Beavers have been doing. I tuned in with you, actually. We were talking about it. It's a Greek's watch party for Mia Scream yesterday, and they looked like they were absolutely on fire. One of the few teams also rocking the Bangalore. 
Yeah, it's really tough for them, right? We see a lot of the teams in EMEA starting to play more zone. Even Vexed Gaming electing to so kind of switch up there. their play style as well. Well, what does that leave the teams that are hard edge fighters to do? Like Fire Beavers, oh. right? You may not run into a whole lot, but Pioneers, they're going to be cornering in the Fire Beavers right now. They are on the hunt. And this is like maybe what we're seeing from Zane, right? You get Nasky being that IGL, knowing that you have an insane fragger to be able to counter on. Well, Fire Beavers, they say, you know what? We're out. Utilization of the Valk, they're going to reposition themselves quite nicely. This is interesting. They're going to be wrapping around to go through the tunnels of Skyhook because they know it's not a good idea to continuously go out of the circle north towards the north side of where Survey Camp is. We can expect there to be another team that we originally saw Fire Beavers peeping at before KCP kind of snuck up behind them. But now they can also use that crafting table right there so that way they can actually get all the extra meds that they need between med kits, uh, the shield bats, of course, that's going to be important. And something that we have to note here too, Tiff, what's in the replicator for today? I always love talking about this. Always my favorite little segment. And what my favorite thing to add into the replicator, because it's just going to cause chaos, the turbo charger and purple <laughs> barrel stave. I know the mobile respawn isn't here for a weekly rotation just yet. That will be coming in for ALGS day two tomorrow. But we do have the purple bag and purple helmet in that replicator. Yeah, I think it's a great utilization, right? We saw Fire Beavers as one member of the team only had one med kit coming into this. But if you are going to be aggressive and make your late rotation into zone, you need to make sure that you're going in completely kitted out with the heals that are going to allow you to take on fights and crafting your shields up because it's just so mission critical. You do not want to go in to that end game. At least like teams like Ascend where they're playing crypto and have the EMP available to them to kind of farm up their shields. Fire Beavers not going to be able to do that. They are going to have to utilize all of the damage and actually they're going to hit the rotation back the way they came mm. from. So we do know that we had seen KCP in that vicinity, but they've already kind of hit their way on to the next team. Team Danish just north of Epicenter as long as Heroes as well. So, but the real context this of the ring there. is getting into overlook vicky because that's a challenging one yeah it is the circle is going to be pulling towards the north side by the so rocks no north water. of overlook so this is going to be very interesting for the northern rotating teams you can see right there what tiff was mentioning too getting scanned by the survey beacon knowing which teams are already on top of that survey beacon it's also notes that team where fire beavers is going to be rotating at least this squad in particular and talking about the different legend compositions with the bangalore with the sierra and valkyrie fire beavers are playing to the strengths right now like we highlighted between the wraith and the caustic playing bunker down for that final circle positioning at the beginning of the game fire beavers are playing a hard edge comp right now they can play aggressive and if they're in a difficult situation they can take that valkyrie skyward dive and he'll marry that into where they think is going to be safe if none of these other buildings are taken up where they're going to be predicting where that circle is going to be pulling yeah, well, they make their rotation. I had a chance to reach out and speak to Oi Rain on Fire Beavers. He said the team is feeling super well. They've already completed the hardest part of the game. They got their visas, so they are prepped and ready to take on Split 2. And essentially, their overarching goal, easy qual to land, top one playoffs, top one champs. And where does it start? It starts here. And yes, we've kind of been amping up, but the fact is no teams have gone down thus far, but it's going to be Lafitte de France in that early game engagement inside the tunnels just between Geyser. Yeah, this is a play out with them playing patiently around the edge. They have the gold rampage, but no thermite. It looks like to charge it up right now. Yolo is going to be backing away, but with the seer, they're also going to have knowledge if a third party wants to come in right behind them. They get scanned by the beacon to let the team know which of these teams may be fighting or engaging. But the answer here is with that information being declared, do they want to play this patiently? Do they want to try to engage in this fight? Because that's just a third party waiting to happen. Ooh, and you've got Vexed on the outskirts, and you know that Tyler and Unlucky are going to essentially be competing to see who can be that regular season kill leader. We know Tyler wants to run it back and kind of get that under their radar as well, but they've really shifted their play style to be more rotate early, try to play zone as much as possible. But if you have the opportunity to gatekeep a team like Lacita de France, you're going to enact that. But Danish right now running into the likes of Kansas City Pioneers. This is the first time we're going to get to see what Zane and Co can do, but Danish look to have the upper hand with an early knock on a Sardell. 
You know who may get their revenge, though, and booting them out of the train tracks. Could be Fire Beavers coming in right behind them. Dane is now losing out on that one member currently as Babe is going to be able to clear out the rest. He's got the shields up real quick here, too. Can they get the res in time before the third party moves in? Yeah, and I think you have to start counting at that point. This is where Catalyst is going to be so mission critical. You can see the CRQ trying to cancel that res, but it's not going to work. Young Hong Kong taking a lot of damage, but Babis is actually able to utilize the Dark Veil, the piercing spikes, to try and prevent any onslaught and buy his team a bit of time to go ahead and get the heals on. It's not going to be enough. Frick's going down early. Oh, unfortunate right there, too. And they got quartered. Fire Beavers coming out on top with a perfectly timed third party. We did see the gold knockdown shield res come out, so we saw that player get back up with some additional health, but it wasn't enough time here before Fire Beavers were able to wrap around the truck. Now look at this. It's like Christmas at their feet, and now the fourth party is ready to roll in. Yeah, this is where it's going to be really tough, utilizing those smokes from Bangalore and the Rolling Thunder to try to anchor off that space. They didn't take a lot of damage in that early engagement. The one thing they do lose jumping down to that trailer is going to be the high ground. Now you've got heroes sitting on top of them, and this is where we're going to be looking at. This is the former From Nowhere roster. They came in through the Split 2 qualifier, so this is kind of a good showing for them. They want to step into Split 2 regular season and get a good, strong start. And with Clemmy grabbing the opening knock, they are already want to make sure that they can deny Fire Beavers the access to getting into the next zone. See, I mean, they probably were able to also get that gold knockdown just in case so they could get that quick res. It didn't look like they also had that gold Evo shield. Yeah, there you go. You see the ping coming in from Clemmy. He's got the nemesis, but we know that despite this gun being just insane now after it's released for season 16, we know that it eats up a lot of ammo. You can see that. I believe there's only 60 energy bullets left inside of that nemesis. They're waiting on the edge of that circle before this next circle closes in, but so much fighting is also being done in the mouth of where this vault cave if is out in the open of no name. Yeah, I think it's a very valid point. Aimbot in the hands of that R9. A lot of talk about the R9 versus the car versus what SMG is the way to move. But that R9 got a little bit of a buff for season 16. And Aimbot throwing up the dark veil. It takes about five seconds to get this wall into completion. They're going to be able to isolate the line of sight from any team that is on their right and allow them to move forward into that building. You can see cutting off from Vex, Sierra Exhibit going out. A lot of information, but they need to get in there safely. See what they're going to be able to do now with the circle closing in. We take to the skies with the Skyward Dive. Vex also on the slight high ground right now in the middle of their rotation. The Seat their Fonts are able to get away in time, but they're going to find themselves pinched between two squads here. At least trying to take a little bit of cover right now. And with the Catalyst Tactical as well, you could try to at least try to disrupt some vision before you have to play on the mouth of this tunnel. I like that you mentioned that Vex having that initial high ground, that wall from Catalyst is only about eight meters high. So it's really not going to be into effect if a team has such a substantial high ground on you. But Tyler FPS getting the opening knock on to listen. They should be able to completely clean this up, but they lose out on their IGL Matafe. He gets kind of caught out. And now Unlucky and Tyler are going to have to get back to his sides. But playing Bangalore, being able to smoke things out, is going to be really great if every team wasn't running a Seer. <laughs> Oh yeah, everybody sees you. Nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. It's like Apex Legends is a horror game. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to watch out with the Seer ult coming in. Tyler holding onto his own before he gets taken down eventually. But Tappy manages to pop the shield back. He had a Phoenix that would have been great, but I don't think he even had enough time before they were able to melt him down the nemesis. Now coming in as Morningstar is gonna clean up that loot. Ooh, a really good showing thus far from Morning Stars. Also coming in from those split two qualifiers. So excited to see what they bring to the table. Already two eliminations for the team thus far. 16 squads remaining. And I feel like we are hitting that kind of chaotic area of this zone. We know it's pulling straight from Overlook more towards the north side of it. But it's going to be an absolute gauntlet. And when you only have a couple mountains in the tunnel below to play, just look at Outplayed making that. They're playing the underside. All they have to do is pop up that zip line, and they would be able to come behind them and just kind of unleash them. But the fact is they're just kind of huddled into that corner trying to go ahead and get reset while Dynasty, the former Rats roster, still kind of playing the other side of the mountain. This is a dangerous position to be in, though, especially with the circle now closing in in less than three seconds. They're pinched between two squads. I believe I saw Black Market on the backside, so we do have a Loba in the lobby as well. Rocking the alternator with, what, 30 bullets and a dream out here. Dynasty need to get moving shortly, but they want to also clean up some KP while they're at it. 
It's tough. You're just getting an onslaught of seer tacticals coming your way, and you need to be able to hold your positioning, but you're going to have to walk through one to three teams, and we always talk about the alternate, and everyone's like, why oh, are no. they playing that? No, dude, the aim is pretty legit. Unfortunately, they're going to run right into Morningstar, and Sorbin lasts alive for Dynasty, trying to make something happen, and they do Ooh. go ahead and clean up LCDF, but they are going to lose to the Storm, and Morningstars had actually already taken a nice rotation, but the ring is at their backs, and Mask falling as well. Can Siv and clutch this up? Where do you go? I mean, the, the ring just does so much damage. They finally get to take a breather behind these rocks. The Bangalore smoke too to give Nisa some extra cover. Seven is also going to need to get some cover himself, but not before he loses out on his Seer teammate currently. It's Fire Beavers looking to fry this lobby. They've cleaned up 5kp with their journey, exiting out of the north side of the map, and they're frying. They get another knock eye while they're out of here, too. 11 squads left with Game of Drones knocking down. Two words, one element, one animal, fire beavers. I am so excited <laughs> to see what they can bring to this because they are raining punishment from the high ground. They are just on the outskirts of that next ring, but you can see they're already pinging their next kind of course of action and where they want to play from. You can see Horizon holding kind of the god spot on that rock to the left. Ascend taking up a good bit of space with the ability of Watson just kind of centered in the middle. It's going to be a little challenging, but fire beavers is running that really high hyper aggressive composition that is allowing them to essentially just move up and take space and that bang smoke is keeping them safe as well so sure there's a little bit of open area in between them and the rest of the teams but i think that they should be able to cover that distance with the smokes i mean the recharge time is 30 seconds on that tactical so they should be all right but oh, look at all the exhibits what? going up <laughs> Oh my goodness, it looks like a compare contrast table out here too with the double exhibits. It looked like I saw a respawn beacon out in the open right there too. The missile swarm now moving in. My are falling incredibly low right now. Start a fight or try to engage goals for the quick shield swap. I see a knock player on the ground here too. They're just trying to do their best to survive inside of this train car. But at the same time, you know other teams have the slight high ground. Fire Beavers on the other side. Maestro now coming out on top after taking care of two members of start a fight between Blast and Lackey. Yeah, see, we had a lot of questions when looking at Maestro Gaming right now, right? Rugby and Sonya coming in from Navi, bringing in tax from that Challenger circuit. And you can see it send falls, outplayed falls, start a fight esports going to fall. And currently Maestro oh. has three eliminations. And that's the negative side of the Dark Veil is the time that it takes to kind of enact that wall and all the chaos on Sluing now. Sonya last alive, going to try to keep that up. They're oh. going to fall to the Fire Beavers as well. The trade right there too, but Fire Beavers lose out on two members. Let's see if the Reds can come in now as Nine Impulse is still alive on the brink of the circle. Remember, we also noted that we we saw that they were able to pick up a gold knockdown. Not too sure. Yeah, Nine Impulse isn't the one that has it in his hand. Taskmaster still could reset here too, and they have the death boxes to reset if they need to with the evil shields. But all right, heroes literally living their life on the edge. Not too sure how they could get out of this alive, especially with uh, Horizon Rather of uh, Phoenix Legend see playing off the low ground with them in their sights and they're gonna have to take circle damage it's gonna definitely be difficult for heroes inside of that cart to get away yeah, I mean, you look at this. You've got Totem on the left. You've got Phoenix Lexi in the cart on the right. They do actually play Watson as well. I believe Sabs is the uh, player who is going to be playing that. Recently signed to TSM. We got to see her and hear from her in London. They had her on the desk for a little bit, and I had a chance to speak to her, right? She was kind of like, oh, but Heroes with the Wraith and that portal for the endgame scenario going straight for the rooftop, but unfortunately going to fall from a member of Phoenix Legacy. You're really opening yourself up, throwing out the Seer ult, and here comes an in by Catwall. This is those endgame audio and visual clutters that we were talking about. It's an all-out brawl. This is what I was expecting, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Can they get the res right now? This is why the Wraith is a particular pick. What a play that we saw with that portal try play, and they aren't going to be able to get the res. Meanwhile, look who's eating. Look who's feasting. Like, it's an early Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to be the Fire Beavers. Only one more arrow inside of that bow check before you're forced to make the swap real quick. You got the R9, but you get beamed. Playing off the slight lip of the rock, you know that the two teams are going to be engaging into each other, and Fire Beavers are in a very difficult spot they're going to be exposing themselves to both of these teams if they're not distracted with one another 
Well, I mean, you look at Phoenix Legacy and you have heroes on top of them. They're going to collapse into one another as soon as Fire Beaver starts taking shot at heroes. The thing is, they don't have a lot of ground to play. Just this truck and maybe a small rock in front of them if they can even make that manageable. So you're really going to look to Impulse and the ability of those Bangalore Smokes to kind of provide you cover. You have Oiran with the R9 in a Digi Threat, so it's going to provide a lot of information regardless. But that Caustic ult, that's going to eat you alive. Heroes Falls, now we're down to the final three. Final three right now, Phoenix Legacy, Fire Beavers, Totem Esports, and Fire Beavers with the smoke are going to be able to use this opportunity to close in the gap. The same cannot be said about Jazaz, though, currently just trying to reset, but he's getting beamed. Thorfinn is on the other side. He's got the Digi threat to help elevate him through the Fire Beavers line of sight here, too. They clean up that one last player of Phoenix Legacy, and we got two squads left. Fire Beavers down one member, but they have the number advantage. Number advantage, Impulse going and hip firing that flat line, oh. but unfortunately not going to be able to do it. Taskmaster, and they are your map one winners here split two starting off with a bang or a beaver i should say they look like they were literally on fire i mean there's a reason why tiff we were talking about this team in the pre-game show fire beavers looked on top during scrims yesterday and you could tell that they're bringing that confidence out there they were able to take game number one i also really like the rotation the option to disengage from kcp could have made them just fall early in that game but instead they rolled with that momentum with their composition between the legend and the aggressiveness yeah, they kind of realized they didn't have the resources available to that. So hitting that Valkult to really get that. But I'd be curious. Let's bring back Rain. Let's hear what your thoughts on map number one, our first game of Split 2. I mean, I'm still I'm still getting over uh, starting the game with a bang or a beaver. I mean, <laughs> Tiff, I, that's a question that's hard to answer. I'm, I haven't been posed that question before. But I think ultimately, as we get back into analyzing the, uh, the, the post game, it was a phenomenal tour de force of skill. And I think uh, that's where we got to bring it back with Vicky and Tiff take a little break to kind of analyze where that skill came from. I think it was just Fire Beavers having a lot of quality. I don't know if they were in the best spot. In fact, it looked like uh, they were in the maybe one of the worst spots there in terms of having really not a lot of cover to play from two or three teams in front of them. Uh, but at the end of the day, they stayed up as a trio and that, that made the difference at the very end after a great play from Reply Totem. Yeah, and not only that, though, but this also was a perfect highlight in the end game to show the difference between having a Catalyst in your Legend comp and having yeah. a Bangalore. Yeah, they didn't yeah. have much cover to work with, but those smoke grenades came in clutch. It also allowed them to solidify all that KP at the very end. I think by the end of that game, they had like 18 KP to their name, aside mm. from the dub. So yeah. OJ Ryan went crazy, but the combination between the Bangalore smoke and the Seer really came through for Fire Beavers right there. I actually was really surprised, too, because typically the rule of thumb in, in high-level Apex is uh, condition characters like Caustics, uh, if you get them to the final zone, they usually win. But that's the that's the key. That's the issue. It's like in an MMO or in some type of card game, you got to meet all these conditions, then the card that beats everything comes out. That's what Caustic is supposed to do. And I thought that Caustic uh, Nox canister, that ultimate that came out, was going to force Fire Beavers into a bad spot. It actually almost worked, and it was the difference between maybe 20 20 to 30 health in terms of that final. But again, we go back to the quality, keeping three players alive, nobody going down early so that it had to be one, then two, then three. That seemed to make the biggest difference, Vicky. But ultimately, I mean, we saw the meta take place. There is a ton of Seers. There is a ton of catalysts. I think we've kind of gotten an idea of where Amiya <laughs> is going to put their energy in terms of compositions. Yeah, let's talk about the legend comps that we weren't expecting to see. I mean, we saw 2R1C earlier on in the game come out with the mm. Fuse, the Wraith, and the Caustic. Didn't really work oh, out yeah. the best way for them, but that was very cool to watch. Heroes making that portal play at the very end, too, with the Wraith. And, but it did force them to play a lot more patiently. When we take a look at the highlights, Alliance did stick to the Rampart, by the way. We saw them in the end game, but we didn't see them too much in terms right. of the ability to get all the KP that they may have wanted. That was really interesting because, you know, Alliance maybe game two will keep an eye on them a little bit more. Game one, they did get to seventh place. Was curious how that ended up going, but in that final circle, that box that you saw Fire Beavers playing around that car and that box on the top of the hill, they had just taken down Alliance Hockeys before that in game started. So we'll see if game two offers something else. Vex, they were on the high ground, really making it a difficult rotation for the Seat of France. You saw they tried to put that catalyst wall to just block some of the high ground, but it was to no avail. Vex ended up dying as well. A lot of these teams, Vicky, traded their lives here just trying to get to the zone. 
Yeah, this is a difficult rotation too compared to the squads that you saw like Fire Beavers actually make their rotation from the north side at one point. Some fighting did happen by the epicenter area, but it was about having that high ground that really elevated these teams without adding in the extra pressure of the circle, closing in behind some of these teams back. Meanwhile, Fire Beavers are like, we're fully kitted. We want to get involved in these fights. They literally have the high ground looking like they're on Pride Rock overlooking the teams that are running for their lives on the low ground. Maestro also tried to pull up a pretty cheeky catalyst wall play, but unfortunately, again, with the pressure of the circle, they weren't able to get as much done. I did really like this rate pick. You had mentioned it. We saw it here. One of the things that heroes looked like they were able to take advantage of was a play that only Wraith could have pulled off, getting those immunity frames, going into the void, and obviously putting her teammates in the same position where they wouldn't have had to run out into danger and could just get there. Almost did it, but it would be Fire Beavers who focused them from that rock off the top and then take down Reply Totem to gain the first place position on top of a ton of kills. So great legend display and obviously a great showcase of teamwork too. But I mean, let's let's bring it back to the other thing. You talk about how many exhibits there were, Vicky. I thought I was in the Louvre at this point. I mean, it was exhibit <laughs> on exhibit on exhibit. Seer is here to stay. I, I don't know if we're ever gonna get rid of this legend. I don't know if we want to. It's really fun, but obviously this is something you're gonna have to be very, very careful of in Split 2. Yeah, you know, you know how my thoughts are with Cossack, but I'm gonna have to say Seer has joined him uh, in the Hall of Shame out here. But it's for a reason. You can't knock what works out here, and if it works, you gotta keep taking advantage of it. I also saw at the very end there, Reply Totem, uh, those hit fire shots from Fire Beavers did miss a lot. It would be crazy with how low Taskmaster was if instead of trying to get the knock and finish and trying to get a quick Evo shield swap, they just had uh, diverted their attention from Reply Totem to the last member of Taskmaster on Fire Beavers. If that could have just changed up the game real quick yeah. at the end. It was very close. We saw that Taskmaster was very low. But yeah, so much difference between the Seer, the Catalyst, the Bangalore. It's nice to see this diversity that we're seeing, aside from the Catalyst and Seer being the two main characters that we've been seeing with a lot of the other team comps. Well, uh, of course, game one started with a beaver or a bang. It was a little bit of both, honestly, with the Bangalore and Fire Beavers taking the win. It certainly is heating up, though, as game one is complete. We'll have the results in just a moment when we come back from break and kick off Game two here in split two. Hey. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ALGS. We're here in EMEA, day one, split two. My name is Randy. I'm joined by Vicky Kitty. We're about to break down the action here in game number two. Vicky, I'm excited, you know, ready to cast a little bit, also ready to see how this meta unfolds. I'm just, I'm just hyped to be a witness of this experience because you could tell as all of us back at home are trying to figure out how is this going to play how are these you know skirmishers and the support like what is going to really how's it going to shake out you could tell the players are doing the exact same thing 
Yeah, it's it's always exciting to see the change up between what we witness in scrims before we jump into the pro league when the season starts up again and seeing how they're going to be able to play in, on the battlefield when it really matters. We're seeing the change up. We see some caustics. We see some raids. We saw one Loba from Outplayed. Uh, they were trying to survive on the low ground tunnel by the train tracks where the circle was pulling away from them. But fire beavers literally looked like they were on fire. No water in sight in the entire map to extinguish their flames. And they were continuing their domination I think they cleaned up 18 KP aside from the dub, and they looked fantastic. Well, if you're in California, it would have been a problem because it's been raining nonstop over here for the last couple of days, but nobody was. So let's take a look at that final circle, see how they stayed on fire. Fire Beavers able to max out their value. And it's good when you have a game like this where things could go wrong, things could go right, but it's not even about this circle. This circle represents all the circles that they weren't able to be at in playoffs, Vicky. For those who don't know, they came in with the standings of being one of our number one or number two seeds. They were a threat and it was unfortunate them not being able to participate in it. That will change in split two. So you can tell with more fire puns, a fire has been lit inside of them to start this split off strong and make that statement. I feel like they did that so well. And Thorfinn, how about this? You know, for Totem, kind of almost making it real difficult for Nine Impulse and Taskmaster, who I don't think they were going to have to deal with this type of pressure at the end. Yeah, honestly, reply to I don't think Thorfinn knew that Taskmaster was literally one. Try to focus down on that down player, maybe even trying to get a cheeky knockdown shield play and use it against them. But that wasn't going to come out from Fire Beavers no. right there. And even though you saw Taskmaster was one, he still came out on top, taking the dub for that team for game number one. What's going to change up now that we dive into game number two? Well, that's interesting as well, because I, I'm looking at several teams who are, who are taking different approaches, not necessarily what you would consider last season's necessities. And I think that's opened up people's eyes on how to play Apex. And I'm, what I'm really talking about are uh, ring characters, ring console characters. Those are now only controller characters. You had mentioned the four that get that uh, ability to do so, Caustic actually being one of them. So it's interesting that Reply Totem are rocking that controller, which we haven't seen very often. But when you look at Ascend, right, they're not playing with a, a a controller character they're playing the crypto they're playing the watson who is a support character which we have not dived in, dove into very much um and they're playing the valk who's a skirmisher so they have this ability to yes scan the beacons scan the, the survey beacons but they don't exactly know where that ring is and ascend seem to say it doesn't matter this is just a better play style for us and we can get what we need from there and also the banners we're not really talking about how support players can revive with the banners at the crafting station yeah, the support characters having the Loba, which is what we saw on uh, played side, the the Newcastle, we have the Lifeline and the Gibby from the support players. Having the ability to get your teammates banner is huge, but how much of that is going to come into play when you think yeah. about the late game? That's actually the reason why we started seeing Valkyrie move away from the compositions that some teams were opting to go for, because Valkyrie is great, but in the end game, what can Valkyrie really do? What can the Skyward Dive do other than delay the inevitable, basically put you up in the sky like a firework for other teams to <laughs> highlight you and the missile storm is fantastic to try to close out um some knots when you know a player is very low but then yeah. you compare it to other legends that we have you talk about the crypto the one of the recon characters that we have alongside uh seer vantage and bloodhound the crypto being able to also get the scan on that circle yeah. so that way you could see which of the teams are within the area maybe teams that have predicted where that next circle was going to be rotating um the bangalore another character that we have to talk about one of the assault characters uh, yeah. in that class and just being able to open up those strong pill boxes to give your team anything that they need even things that could be in the replicator for that day well actually i think the assault characters if i look at support right you obviously have the the, the banners that are valuable and i think everyone you know in chat who's been looking kind of theory crafting on this there's some value there i'm not sure if it's been tapped because it's kind of like all right if you're it's like insurance right if if your car breaks down you have triple a which is good but you don't really want your car to break down in general so the best use of this is to never have to use it which is why i think support characters are like okay this is good but i'm not gonna force it because ideally we're alive however with assault characters and you could see with bangalore specifically kind of rocking that the ability to carry extra ammo and the ability to open the um, the second tier of the assault bins, which give you 
four pieces of smart loot, which help you and knowing what your team needs in terms of, you know, giving you the types of sites that are going to be valuable, the types of things and attachments that are going to work for your weapons, but also the fact that it's guaranteed to be rare or above. Plus, maybe you get a digi threat, which is what you need with the Bangalore and in this meta so desperately. I feel like Assault for me is kind of that third tier in terms of quality of you know, value right now in terms of the ALGS. But I don't know, what are your thoughts on on kind of the tiers of the skirmisher, the controller, the, what do you kind of feel are your top three? I guess if it's basic at the moment, controller has to be number one. And and I yeah. feel like when you take a look at the options that you have there, kind of similar to what we referred to when oh, Raven was talking about the team compositions, as we get to take a look right here for you guys to see a visualizing graph right now. Controller players being Caustic, Watson, Rampart, Catalyst, that's why you're seeing so much Catalyst. You mentioned the Watson pick from a sense point of view. Yeah. That is what they could use as a way to get that next circle information. But it's about getting there because now the Crypto Drone where Kashira could use use that crypto drone to get that next circle information without having to overcome it it's literally the drone doing it for you you yeah. can't be safe like that it's watson that would have to go up and get that next circle information or if you don't have the watson it will be the cossack or if you're uh, alliances uh, point of view it would be the rampart which i'm still wondering how that's going to work out for alliance we didn't see them get much out of it other than them playing very passively but you don't want to deny your team kp opportunity which is exactly what fire beavers took advantage of you see the Bangalore, you see the Seer being the recon character, and then you see the opportunity to close in that gap with so many other characters, the Skirmishers, the Valkyrie, to also close in that gap, the Skyward Dive that came through for that team to then reposition around KCP to then go in for a third party. So it really does depend, I feel like, on these teams' strength and the play style mm. that they want to work into, because I do think Ascend is a much more passive team, like we highlighted earlier, but then you yeah. take a look at Fire Beavers, and this team is extremely aggressive. Yeah, and I, you know, I had misspoke earlier about the Watson. I think it's really good to note that she does give a sin that kind of three-dimensional element of the scan of the ring survey beacons, uh, and of course, being able to play with, uh, I believe it was the Bangalore as well. Um, but I, I do know that this is one thing that these characters are bringing. It's a different look at a game that we've all kind of looked at the same. It's a different element of character value, but then also class value. And I think we're seeing that the class value and the character value has always been intermeshed when it when it comes into an overloaded class value that you felt maybe was a Valkyrie or a Seer that just had seemingly everything going for them at certain periods of time in the meta, that now those things are, are separated. Now those things are different choices. And you have to decide which one is really going to take the cake. The one class that, and this is you know just my initial thought, is I would love to see Skirmisher have a little bit of something else. I don't know okay. what it would be, Vicky, but I think there's such value in knowing what the care package is, but maybe there's a way to interact with the care package that's a little bit more favorable or to guarantee, you know, knowing where it's going to land. Something that gives you a little bit of an edge on the care package because it is a bit of a risk uh, to be able to go for it. And also, it's not as, you know, uh, I think guaranteed in terms of some of the other value that some of these classes bring but it's been so fun seeing all this and everyone as well watching at home i'm sure it's been exciting let us know in the chat what kind of uh classes and systems that you've been kind of putting together in terms of your compositions we are obviously waiting to get some things going for you guys i know we've been chatting a lot here but trust me we're getting our games ready we are getting the stats the stats ready the leaderboards ready so we're just taking this time obviously until that is done to give our thoughts on the game but uh Vicky, once we uh, get that match one stats, I mean, to me, the story with Fire Beavers is, is awesome, but it kind of goes back into um, EMEA as well. You know, going from London into the EMEA performances, we saw Alliance do really well. You know, we had these these kind of star-studded moments from them. We, we did end up having teams like Vex, though, that people had high hopes for. People really yeah. wanted to see perform. Didn't necessarily perform. It kind of became a little bit more of an APAC North America show at London. So there's a lot to prove, I think, for EMEA heading into this split. What do you think people and a lot of the captains, the players in, in EMEA are thinking heading into split two about their region and, and making sure that they make a, a big statement at this upcoming land? 
Well, Mia didn't lose out on a spot, I believe, here for the next playoff. So they could feel a little comfortable kind of sticking through the gameplay that they had when it comes to their performance within their respective regions. But I think the number one thing teams of all regions are trying to grasp is what is the most effective legend comp right now that could either counter the catalyst. I know we had uh, some uh, opinions out here coming in from Onset looking at the fuse. <laughs> we did see a fuse, though. Um, and, you know, seeing True. what works better for different play styles. I know I got to speak to Monsoon, obviously, before we got to see these changes for season 16 back in london and i was asking his thoughts about some teams that were running valkyrie less compositions mm. versus other teams that were trying to run unorthodox compositions the first team that i could think about during their performance in split one was aurora they were running yeah. i believe a mad maggie going down with the bloodhound at one point um and it, you know they were popping off we didn't get to see that in london but it was about the topic of conversation of which of these teams yeah. are running what things that are different and why and monsoon was kind of highly highlighting why these teams like to run what they feel comfortable with. If you're finding success Absolutely. playing a certain place, though, you don't have to stick to what is automatically meta. You can stick to what you feel is comfortable. That's why we're seeing some experimentation with either Wraith plays or the Caustic or even the Loba from Outplayed. But how far is that going to take teams like Alliance when it comes to the Rampart? Mm, I don't know. And that's why as we skip ahead, guys, we'll get your standings after game two for the complete two matches. We're just going to jump in to the second match here as well. We appreciate your patience. It's time to get it on. Game two coming at you. Another World's Edge extravaganza. And I cannot mm. wait to see. This meta is new. These players have made roster swaps. They have a new vigor to try to prove that they are the best in the world. It all starts today as we see the landings. Come on down for our squads here as we kick it off. Super excited to jump into this second game with you, Rain, because we saw the action basically start off pretty slow at the very beginning, other than some uh, equal trades that we saw going down. It looks like Overlook may get hot pretty quick as well, as folks who are going to be making their rotation away from Lava City, eventually into the line of sight of Psychbot, Aimbot, you know, by that big mod area, and taking a look at where our circle is going to be taking us. We got a little bit of a change up. I like the diversity of circles. It's not going to be north of Overlook after game number one. Now we're jumping all the way towards the west side of the map between that countdown and landslide area and this is exactly what you would hope for as a player to have just variety to be able to utilize different rotation options and showcase your composition alliance are going to be in a good spot here obviously they can go straight up north to wherever this is or hold steady if it starts to pull south towards them without a lot of teams coming up from behind but they do have to be careful about reply totem op as well KCP also in a pretty nice position with just the back to them, but we start off with a little fight here. Dynasty ESC. Oh, making it sing with the Havoc, but not good enough. A little off tune there. As Sorbin trying to clean up the pieces. Tolkien and him alive as well. Tolkien on a blue. That's big time in these early engagements, Vicky. That extra 25 health is huge. Not a lot of bullets in the EVE 8. Has to make these six shots count. Yeah, you're moving oh, around the one. side of the rock. He gets it. You were talking about it. You need to make that impact with the EVA A, a strong weapon to hold at the very beginning with the catalyst tag. Also blocking that site. He's trying to what? go for a quick shield swap. He's trying his best. Game of drones on the high ground right now, but they're playing off that little slight catalyst area. Oh, because he's got the havoc, and that has that uptime, so you got to make sure that you use it. He'll have a swap two off his teammate. It's really good movement. This should be George's game. He's going to finish it off here. You would almost assume mm. beautiful. The last bullet so takes him down. Game. game of drones. Live to play again. Nice 1v1 there. Big challenge for this team. But they have the banner. They'll be able to do a little bit, bit of work and get back up as a three. Man, let's talk about those piercing spikes, though. Ooh. Clearing up not only just space, but also technically denying the high ground opportunity to try to mix things up right there. Beautiful. You also saw the immediate swap up to the wingman, just in case that last yeah. bullet of the Havoc didn't do it. Now we get to take a look at the teams already predicting where this final circle is going to be moving, or maybe even deny the rotation from some of our other teams. If this circle continuously pulls more towards the west side, towards Mir Mirage of Twa or Lava Fisher out here, a send drop from the under part of that bridge after seeing that there's a Already another team trying to block their position. And then there's another crypto in the lobby monitoring where Ascend wants to rotate. And they are playing off that slight low ground, probably in the line of sight of the squad that lands in Mirage of Twelve or Lava Fisher. Ascend uh, here, five points already. Sitting on it, KCP as well. They've stayed where they landed, so they'll have a chance to kind of fight right in front of them, start a fight right in front of them as well. So synergy in both the name and the situation. All on blues, Nasky, Dell, and Zane. A lot of people in the commentary of the chat and 
throughout some of the comments around these roster swaps. Very happy for Zane to get the big call up. Obviously playing with Jay Lings and having that pop off moment at land that just I think people's jaws didn't get off the floor, Vicky, when that happened for about five minutes. It was oh, yeah. what what an incredible intro for a player. Now he's found his way onto one of the most premier teams in the EMEA region, but who have also had so many challenges as Zane, as we speak of them, takes down Willem with the charge rifle in the air. We know that feeling with the charge rifle, not only being able to boost up your Evo shield pretty easily, but now losing out on your Valkyrie while you take to the skies is not the way they want to play off this low ground. They're in the line of sight of the other team now making the rotation away from Raj. It's a send. We're just in the middle of getting on top of this little high ground right now. They take care of outplayed and now their game plan just completely fumbled right between their fingers. They know that they wanted to go in for that final circle positioning with the Loba, hold down the fort with a black mark at the caustic barrels and that just completely was denied with ascend cleaning up what was left of that team tough stuff there they will have to go back again and try it in game three running out of time here on world's edge how fast it can happen is amazing but zane contributing to that he won't be happy that ascend picked up the kp but he will be happy that at least another team is out they're closer to that win i know kcp is wanting to back to their story a little bit vicky the difficulties in getting Max Strafe to land, that has been a big issue for this team. Nasky, we know he's one of the biggest personalities in Apex, but now having a three, a full three, they know can be at land. This has got to give them some hope and excitement that every game now matters even more than it had before. Nasky, such a passionate IGL too. I was talking about it a little bit at land where there wasn't a moment where I hadn't seen Nasky so happy to be playing with not just his teammates, but his friends. You know, th this is a team that really vibes together. He even said when they picked up Zayn that he could have imagined playing with anybody else out here when it comes to the frag heavy talent that Zayn could really bring to this team. They already rocked basically other events together and they were feeling each other. But after that performance, Nasky was the most emotional I probably have ever seen and he knew that he wanted to come back and make a difference for the second split. Here they are already getting that first KP out here for the team. Zane popping off with the charge rifle. And there's a res actually being done right in front of their eyes. You see the Bangler smoke coming out too to block out their line of sight. Nasky trying to make something happen with a 30-30. Oh, that's, that's going to be easy. Fricks on the Fritz. Start a fight getting involved in that one as well. Pioneers ain't moving. They know it's a Lava Fisher ending. So they're just going to stand there. Nasky with a couple of cracks. Not enough to get a drop, but he'll be satisfied with that and head back to his squad as he pops that final shield cell and gets up to the purple, which is everybody's goal right now. Dell, 72 damage away. Zane, probably something similar if you had to bet on it. And so they will be just sitting tight as they don't have anyone to their back. They do have some to their south, though, and that is something to be careful of. Alliance making their way up north from Thermal to try to get here as it becomes very clear where this is. And if you if we go back to the map, I, I just kind of wanted to illustrate this point I was talking about with the class system. You have these survey beacon scans, right? And so let's say Fire Beavers, let's say Foot Noth, right? You know, Foot, they're not playing with a, a ring character. Well, so what? They get a scan, they look at all these people over there in Lava Fisher, they go, hey, that's where the circle is gonna end. Let alone a lot of pros, Vicky, they already know how to predict these things. So the survey beacon, while I thought might've been more of an aggressive value, it's truly a huge value in terms of IGLing your teams. Because now thought foot, they might know Vex is there to the left. Let's take this route to the right of Harvester and cut through staging instead of going the thermal station route, which is a little closest. So I'm starting to see it have a ton of value specifically for in-game leaders to make great calls on these rotations maybe even more than the ring console yeah and taking their time too depending on their compositions to make their way into that next circle actually trying to huddle not only around a black market that looks like it's been set down by tree probably by outplay before they rotated out of there but also by the teams that could also huddle around the replicator if they need anything extra if they have a havoc or uh, a devo they could just use that turbocharger that they craft up real quick and make their rotation even extra meds out here as a send have taken control over mirage's cruise ship we are all out here for the party i'm so glad mirage Atois is back this is where i learned how to duke it out with so many other players at apex legends and ascend are playing king of the hill right here not only farming their evil shield but they have a lot of loot to work with after they took out that previous team all right ascend here obviously feeling comfortable this is a team that loves to play zone one of the main criticisms of ascend if you were gonna have one 
is that they maybe aren't as lethal as they could be in these final circles. It came down to haunt them when they face off at TSM for that match point final to hoist that trophy. Kashira had wanted to do it so badly for his family, his father, his mother, who were in the stands. It was one of our just most emotional and incredible journeys of a player and a support system, but they'll have a chance again, split two, if they can get there. And they certainly dominated split two in the online side. So more from Ascend as we finally follow along with Vexed here. We're running Seer, Catalyst, and Bangalore. Opting away from the Valkyrie, how do you feel about this, Vic? I feel like right now with the way that Vex is playing this area, they're just trying to play on the edge of all the chaos that's going to be happening in that next circle. Let you can see it right there on the mini map where it's going to be pulling towards Lava Fisher. But with some of these early rotations, this could set up Vex to be pinched between the team that's already in Landslide and then even the likes of Ascend if they make the rotation away from Mirage Voyage towards the north side underneath the train tracks. They're already going in from the other side though. They're not wasting any time to play off the south side of Countdown, which I do like this move here because they can make sure that their backs are cleared once this next circle closes in with 18 squads left. Well, Vex Gaming, they have had so many fans. And in fact, during the Copper Box, I know a lot of you in chat were. You saw the Vex section getting hyped. They were rooting for these gentlemen right here to perform well. And guess what? We've got a special opportunity to root for them again. Let's go ahead with a listen in with Vex Gaming, sponsored by WD Black. I'm watching Vanda. They are, they're crossing on the left. They might want to fight us. Okay. okay. Thank him. Oh, I'm already up. You got him? Blue, 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 blue. You guys okay, blue. Can, I, can I maybe walk up? Um, Let's see where they are now. If they're here, we can look right through, yeah. There. Yeah, they're there. They're playing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple and double blue. Bang guys, purple. And I walk up. Bottle oh, tunnel uh, east. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm backing all the way. Bottle went into this choke, I think. I say we go there. Okay. I'm making the middle doors ours if we maybe have to reset. Yeah. I think they are, yeah, the land choke. Fuck, no, I don't. A bit more back in though, not like inside choke, I think like somewhere here. Who's gonna pull life? Let's go. Maybe uh, we knew this one already. Yeah. I mean, I went I'm not. I mean, we low key could like. I mean, they're not in the next zone, they have to play ramp. When they have to play ramp, yeah, like, yeah, bang yeah. Wait, wait this zone and then we bangle them and kill them on the ramp. Yeah, yeah. Like, we have to watch a little bit like Uber. playing shit. bridge. They're playing bridge right now. There are two of them. With my eyes. Okay. I, I, they smoked me off in the window. I can't see. Yeah, they're just trying to like get goos on me and shit, and they're shooting towards me right now. I can peek here if needed though. Then. Enemy close. Also. I just read the goo. Just keep smoking me. Just I got sick. No, no no I'm, I'm, I'm in the I'm in the window. I'm in the window. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, window. There are three men on the bridge right now. If, the, if I see them drop down, I'm calling you and you're immediately taking bridge, yeah, Tyler? Yeah. No. They smoked me again, I can't see. Careful. Second one. Yeah. They smoked me again, I can't see. Careful. I just see my bridge. Yeah, they're walking up, walking up, walking up, walking up. Okay. Yeah, close, very close. Everyone focus. Yeah, on my door, on my door, on my door, on my door. I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm, you. I'm, 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 I'm still losing. On me, on me, on me. Probably that. I throw a nade. On me, let's just yeah, I'm, I'm trying to swing, I'm trying to swing, I'm trying to swing. Three. I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. I'm going to the way. I'm throwing, I'm throwing. I killed your boss. I cracked one, okay? They're running in, they're running in. They're not, they're not. Betting. Crack one, crack two. Nice. Thanks, sir. Popping about, popping about, popping about, popping about, popping about. Heal, 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 heal. They're good, they're good. We should still watch the rounders behind us. Yeah, I'm watching back. I'm watching back, looking back, looking back. Don't see anyone right now. I'm crack one blue. I'm crossing over to the corner. I got smoked off, okay? Yeah. Can you try getting this gun on them? You need to get more cues on the door. Yeah. yeah. Fine. I think they're trying to lock doors again. Yeah, I'm here. gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm swinging this on me. Might be getting some damage in. Yeah, dude, dude. I'm coming door. Yeah, let's do six. I'm waiting for the smoke to run out. But there's a team on. There's team on. There's team east. Team east. Team east. Team east. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bang one hundred. Bang one fifty. Sorry. They're down there. My thing. Down there. Let's roll thing. Bang one hundred. Bang one fifty. Bang one HP on my thing. Nate, this if you have a nade. Don't forget about this team. Don't forget about the other team. Literally corner. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, just push this guy up. The yeah, best yeah. team ward, this team ward. Take a zip, take a zip. Yeah, it's fine. Cracked, fire flash. Lots of damage. I'm just, I'm just taking them. They smoke me off again. Watch out, they force it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm watching, I'm watching double door. I'm watching double door. We're gonna have another team on bridge now, I think. So careful. Okay. 
It might help us kill them if you for, or like focus them on the left side. Yeah. Both yeah, they're just stuck there. They're just stuck there. You want my helmet? Take your helmet. Yeah. Oh, Dropping helmet. They just swap a shit. I'm popping out of the I'm 2 I'm 2 Yeah. I'm just getting your back now. We need to. I, I'm gonna play with Unlucky from the left side a little bit. Yeah. Max Gaming in the middle of it. Vicky trying to stay alive here. You can tell the tense energy is rising in the lobby as Fire Beavers now in a little bit of a something with foot. Lippin, Taylor trying to make it through the chokehold. What can they do against the team that won game one, not trying to let them through? Yeah, that was Morning Stars that, uh, that Vex was actually fighting originally. And with Foot playing against Fire Beavers right to the south of Countdown, they could actually get involved from a distance. Alliance get taken out in your feed. So does Reply Totem. Ascend cleaning up a lot of the lobby while they exit out of Mirage Voyage there, playing up that low ground. But Foot also some trouble. Just Taylor having to reset real quick. But look at the amount of vision just being disrupted. If it isn't the Catalyst Wall, if it isn't the Spikes, it's got to be the Bangalore Smokes coming in from Lifen as well. Shots from Knopf on the car. R99 is taking over the ranking SMG number one spot, but the car can still get the job done, especially in the hands of Knopf. Isn't enough, has to play behind both shields, should be over. And it certainly is. Ethereal comes in at the right time and cleans that one up as nine impulse and fire beavers with 35 points already, my goodness, are still alive, but not very healthy. It's gonna be up to Vex Gaming to clean this one up. And Tyler's gonna have to buy some time. It's all on Unlucky. And Unlucky gets the kill, but he can't even get the other one. There's another poke away. This endless fight is not stopping. There should be swaps though. And look at Tyler, one hell, Vicky. Oh, Fire Beavers finally get eliminated. They had tried to get out of that fight before Maestro says, all right, now's our chance. We're gonna be moving in for the fifth party if the fourth party was enough. They get to come out with such amazing loot too and getting out of the fray as quickly as possible while making the rotations back towards the train track before another team has the opportunity to take up this space. The Skyward Dive now coming into the air. Believe that could be a send if they're rotating from the low gun right there. It is a send right now. It's Luca coming in with the Skyward Dive. He falls so no low. Way. He managed just to get inside are you kidding me they have this building there's no one in this building what? right now are you kidding me how did ascend land that obviously into one of the best spots for their team composition the whole lobby is going to be shaking their head on this one ascend have just found what could be considered god spot in some ways especially with a watson deterring people from coming inside that will look good for them I imagine KCP could still be where they were before. Maestro Gaming, they fought tooth and nail to get here. And they have found a little bit of safety in that underneath side of the bridge. They'll be able to play this for a while, especially with the catalyst on Sonya, being able to piercing spike some of those staircases. But how about a sin, Vicky? Just getting into such a good spot with that Valkyrie ult. You can see, even though Valkyrie doesn't scan the ring anymore, she still brings so much value in terms of late rotations. Their rotations in general have just always been so on point. If it isn't early in the game, it could even be in the late part of the game. With 10 squads left right now, Maestro Gaming playing on the low side after they made their rotation outside of not just getting involved in the fifth party to the south of Countdown, but also making the rotation on this underneath part of the building where so many other teams are already neighboring them. Look at where the circle is going to be pulling to. KCP? Yeah. They called this from the very beginning. They have not left this building despite other teams making the rotation from the north side of the map. They have not left here, and now they can face down against Ascend, who's not in that next circle, and they could easily get pinched by other teams that are going to be forced to rotate by that next circle towards their north. It's going to be a big play because Ascend have two options here. You fight KCP right away. You hit him with the EMP. You push inside. Can KCP handle it? You get God Spot if you can win that fight. Otherwise, you're out of zone and you try to play passively and then you you risk getting shot by multiple other teams if you try to do a wide swing or just kcp not getting aggressed on and having the freedom to shoot you from the safety of a building so i think ascend are better off trying to go for it and maybe go for it in a little bit of an awkward time when maybe kcp isn't expecting a full push vicky but again will they do it that's the big question heroes very fine just having a reinforced door barricaded up thanks to the catalyst ready to shoot in case there is an opportunity to do so. Ascend here, I think they have tried to go for it, and I think they have taken maybe the bottom floor here. Grenades coming in, it might be Ascend versus KCP. This is the fight I was talking about here, but KCP seem to be winning it. Kashera, the last one alive. Lupka and Boskill are also down, and it is KCP who say, get out of here.
Oh, evicted, and that was perfect knowledge from them, knowing that there was no watch and gen for them to play off of. The bombardment of grenades while Heroes is also melting down another team from right to their south. Vex Gaming get taken out of the lobby. Seven squads left, and Heroes have the high ground on top of his roof. Love KCP being able to take on the biggest challenge possibly and do it in style. Get back and hold the greatest place to play from. But Heroes now on the high ground, looking to hit a couple PK shots. Use that Babylon's rate, dimensional rift. They've got a truck. Oh. They've got a little bit of mobility. They've oh. now lost one, though. Heroes oh. going to have to make some plays. Nine points of their name. They take the portal right back as Pioneers start to get aggressive. This team shouldn't be too much of a threat. Pioneers just have to hold this high ground. This could be their game, Vicky. I was sitting on the edge of my seat right there. I was expecting an insane play. Maybe they wanted to go right back in, but they were booted out of that area as KCP take on another fight, come out on top. They also earlier had knocked Hyraka, but 2R1C is still alive. I believe Uchako is still alive somewhere. So is Maestro. Look at this. Sanya is still alive here too. A start up fight are on the high ground. Where can they go? They could try to take a Skyward Dive, which would be incredibly risky, but you know that the Valkyrie gets probed up just a little bit above that pillbox. Let's see where they could go while the spikes now come in from the Catalyst. I really do love the way that KCP have decided to take this game and make it theirs. They could have sat in the building. In fact, they did. But to go and switch into the aggressiveness at the right time again and again, this is showing like KCP might be the team that people think they are, with Zane included, adding that fragger, adding the core of Dell and of Nasky. Could this be KCP's time? It certainly looks like it in game number two here. Maestro, Sonya, rugby and tax. Getting down a business down below. Nasky trying to get involved and pick up some KP as well. Every point matters. Danish also alive. It is the final three. It is Danish, Maestro, and KCP. KCP on the high ground. I'm not sure there's much they can do, Vicky, to get away from this. It's going to be up to Pioneers <laughs> just to try to make it. And you can tell Zane, he's chilling. Oh, and he gets two kills off of it. Oh, Zane's not stressed at all. This is just KCP putting on a clinic here. And they're going to take it. Game two belongs to the Pioneers. Oh, and with ease there too, they had the God Spot on the high ground the whole time. I mean, at the very end, really, what could the remaining teams do? I believe Maestro still had Tax alive till the very end and they could have tried to fly out of there, but no Horizon in sight. That was all KCP to eat and have fun with. What a moment and Tiff, welcome back. Watching from the sidelines, what an exciting end game, but what a performance from KCP there to close it out. That was the teamwork that we were wanting to see. I spoke to Naske heading into this, and he was talking about how him and Dell have the ability to work around other thirds and easily adapt. And I don't know if that's history of them bringing in subs for LAN, and they were really excited working with Zane, being able to say that that process was moving along very nicely. And I mean, come on. Map number two, they've already got a victory. Zane emoting on them before dropping down to finish it off. I mean, the confidence is there. I love that point you just made too. Vicky, what are your thoughts? Nasky and Dell have probably had to play with a sub as a duo more than any other professional squad in a the ALGS. That does bode well for immediately uh, doing well with Zane. Yeah, when I, when I got to see them perform with Verhost, I believe it was Rewired Fest back in October, I said the same thing to Nasky, and they're like, you know, we got it. And Nasky even said that they changed things up, and basically they're like professional diddles that like to work around their third. They <laughs> let Verhost take the IGL role, and Nasky says, you know what, if he's cooking, let him cook. And they basically work so well around these thirds that you could see now integrating Zayn into this roster is going to work magic for KCP. After taking that dub, I can't wait to see how it's going to shake up the overall leaderboard. All right, let's take a look at the confirmation of the results for match number one. We finally have those for you. Thank you so much for your patience as well. 30 points for Fire Beavers. Big time stuff from them. And also Reply Totem doing what they need to do, getting nine placement points, but a nice couple of kills at the end. Phoenix Legacy just a few points behind. Alliance Heroes taking out our top five. As we head to our bottom 10 as well, this is, of course, game one. We just finished game two. So we've got those stats coming in as well. Uh, there's Pioneers at the bottom. So <laughs> Tiff, they're gonna have a very different result here in game two compared to uh, what happened in game one for them. Yeah, 
I mean, it's just something to look at. Maybe they had made a small error on their rotations. We saw at one point they were pushing the fire beavers in the tunnel just on the outskirts of Epicenter to the left in survey camp. But you think about map number two, that zone really favored them. They kind of switched up their landing point. They claimed Lava Fissure and Mirage Atois during scrim. So the fact is they had the power of their drop spot POI being that end game. And they're very familiar with that POI. So I think that had a good lay of the land for them. You saw just how they were able to navigate. They knew where they needed to play from. They knew kind of the ins and outs of the buildings. You saw even the catalyst ability to utilize the piercing spikes. We know just how far they can shoot. And they were really punishing yeah. start a fight inside that center dome. It's not always easy, Vicky, to win the games you should win. I mean, this is a BR. RNG happens a lot. Uh, but KCP were favored in that one. They landed exactly almost where that game ended. So maybe that's the difference, too. Having to go to the you know the east side and being able to stay on the west where they're landing in World's Edge, clearly that had an impact in their success late game. Also, trying to negate any sort of pressure from the bullies that wanted to take control over their building. Thinking about the play that right. we saw from Ascend, who didn't have the Watson gen at the very end, that also gave information to KCP to know, well, we could just barrage them with grenades if they don't have the Watson gen. And once they got the cracks, they just fully sent it in at that point. It was an unfortunate situation for Ascend. I believe the Watson gen was at 80 so percent before it was able to come online, if I can recall correctly there. And with that rotation, Ascend had no choice, too. They needed to try to boot them or at least share that same building but kcp took full advantage of the fighting happening to their north side to then be able to focus their attention on a sense since they knew that no other team was going to try to focus taking their building as a third party well tiff you just joined us first map was on the east side now we went to the west side i'm on the east bank i'm on the west bank <laughs> shout out to mel brooks uh also talk to me a little bit about what we saw here in game two I just love the utilization of Catalyst Tactical to really force your teammates off a specific positioning. And then you saw it right there with that f initial fight with Ra uh, Dynasty, my apologies, that former Rats roster, just throwing it on there so you know that the other team can't climb up there. So it's just the way you utilize those abilities. Now, I mean, Alliance over there saying it's not the abilities, it's not the legend, it's the talent that you can see. But Pioneers clearly had that talent from the start, not having to move from Lava Fissure. But I was talking about Vex, right? Mm. Vex has been making some moves here, and it was really good to see them kind of move into the POI, start kind of forcing themselves into that zone play a little bit early. Now, granted, I think it's going to take them a little bit to kind of get up to speed and really show what they're made of here, but it's a good start. They went ahead and switched up their drop spots. They were landing staging, which kind of forced them into alliance a lot in split one. They've moved over to Lava Siphon to help with that zone push here. And Vicky, you know, if things just heated up as well, this is kind of the start of the chaos, right? Yeah, this is where we saw not just third, fourth parties come in, but the fifth party at the very end, too. We tried to see the reset from Fire Beavers, but they could only go so far when there was teams exiting out of Countdown, rotating away from Thermal, or rather Lava Fisher over to the other side. Pioneers here, though, took advantage of a said not having that Watson gen and cleared out that building before a fourth party or third party could roll in from the other teams that were fighting on the north side of that final circle. Maestro would take the low ground. It wouldn't be enough, though. Up there, you could see the likes of KCP. Zane even took a second to take a rest. Little emote on the Valkyrie fly in and help <laughs> clean it up as they wide swung and cleaned up from a zero-point game into a big win. What will it be? We'll find out in just a moment. But kind of going deeper into that final circle, was there anything that could have been done? I mean, KCP obviously in a great spot, but Tip, is there any way around it the way that they were playing? So, okay, you can already look to see where the cat wall is. You see the piercing spikes that KCP is utilizing coupled with the missile swarms from the Valk to really punish start a fight and keep them inside. And you've already got Maestro Gaming on the low ground. Their Valk gets knocked early on. They don't have a Horizon or a Legend that's going to be able to bring them up from the low to high ground. So they're kind of just stuck down there in a sense. And you can see right here, they find a lot of success. But when Tax goes down early, that really punishes them because their only ability to get down 
start a fight knows they're not going to be able to get over to challenge KCP. So what do they do? They play for second. They try to get as many KP as they possibly can this game by jumping immediately onto the low ground. Danish still alive, just a solo, just trying to stay and do whatever they possibly can to get some placement points. But Pioneers had the power position. And right here, that moment from Zane, just uh. so confident. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is, but that's what you like. You, you need to see that little bit of flash, you know, it, it, there's a really fun element to the fact that they knew they were going to win. I think they knew they were going to win even before anybody fell down to the bottom or challenged. That's the confidence they had in that zone from the beginning to the end. And it showed up here. Not the biggest win. We know that we saw some big, big games in game one from Fire Beavers, but now Pioneers are in the mix. 24 total points. Vicky, give me your reaction here to this top 10. I'm liking Pioneers waking up after that first game. Like you mentioned, they were at the very bottom of the overall leaderboards. Tip highlighted it perfectly. They were caught in the middle of the rotation. I believe they also got third partied on the low ground um, inside of a train cart by Fire Beavers, who ended up wrapping right back around to actually contest them on the edge of the circle. Despite this performance, though, this is going to allow Pioneers to now start kicking up the momentum. This is important here. Yeah, Danish survived as a solo, but unfortunately, they didn't get any KP to their name like we saw certified esports. When they were secured inside that building or maestro force on the low ground those teams were able to at least secure not just uh, just points in general for positioning but kp as well looking on the other side though fire beavers didn't do the best potential chance that they could have had compared to their first chance but you know what we say tiff it's if you get five to seven even on a bad game and you have a couple of those pop-offs you're still in a really good position that's why i want to get your reaction as we head over to our series results here for match two and one combined where does it leave us fire beavers still in the lead by nine tiff reactions to the results after games two Look, 30 points in map number one is going to keep you consistent for at least three to four maps, so long as you can get some points throughout the next couple maps. And I think Fire Beavers have done enough. KCP coming back, putting down a 24 point game. Obviously, that's going to shoot them straight up the leaderboard. But what's really impressive, and I know we were talking a lot about this, are the powerhouses of each region and asking a lot of teams to kind of step up and challenge them. You look at that top five. Maestro Gaming, that former two of the former members from Navi, right? Phoenix Legacy, you got Sabs on there, you've got Alpha Draft and Impulse, like some teams that may have came in through those Pro League Split 2 qualifiers, really trying to set themselves up for a good bit of success here. Now, and I think back to Split 1 Pro League, right? The regular season, yeah. guess who got the win on match day number one? Oop. It's Pioneers. It's Pioneers, oh. baby. So they're starting yeah. a little bit early here. I'm sure they had a little bit of a donut in map number one, but come back swinging. Well, you're right. They do tend to start these pro leagues really, really well. And that's the thing. We've got Pioneers and we've got Fire Beavers who have taken the games so far and in quite commanding fashion as well. But we've also seen teams like Ascend, Alliance, even Vex show glimpses and moments, but not get started in the way we would have expected for some of our top teams to show up in day one. Will that change here in game three, our final game on World's Edge? We're about to find out as we send it over to our casters for the game, Spider Tiff and Vicky Kitty. Thank you so much, Rain. I can't actually believe that we're already on our final map of World's Edge for the day, Vicky. And we've already got a little bit of diversity in the ring. So I guess I'm trying to call for a southern zone on World's Edge. <laughs> Look, Tiff, are you telling me you don't want three rings on Climatizer? No, I'm joking. That was our first experience <laughs> casting together. That was definitely one that I will never forget. Just like I'm not going to forget this first day here in Amiya to kick things off. I, I can't believe it. Yeah, the final game right now on World's Edge before we make the transition into Storm Point for those of you guys just tuning in two games down one more to go on world's edge and i'm excited to see the difference of composition diversity that we've seen between caustic coming in wraith we even saw lobo from outplayed that didn't work out for them but we got to also highlight the rotations that we've been seeing you highlighted vex changing up their poi and what that means as well as ascend making the rotation away from mirage voyage towards the underside of the train tracks into lava fisher 
Yeah, it's really tough. You know, you learn a lot through split one regular season, but you go into playoffs and Vex, you know, they highlighted it. They went up with that hard edge style against all the teams throughout globally, right? And it just didn't pay off for them. So they knew coming back to the drawing board, they had three to four weeks to kind of think about how they wanted to approach it. Now claiming Lava Siphon and switching up that drop spot POI, which if you're familiar with North America, you know that's TSM's kind of home. <laughs> and they found a lot of success there. You typically have crafting. You can see that it's got a ring console. It's got a survey beacon. You have a lot of kind of different abilities there and not to mention some really high tier loot. And as you can see, as our team spread out in their drop spot POIs, I'm just waiting to see where that, oh, Vicky, did we jinx it? Are we going up no, north? No. Oh no, I don't I don't think it could be going to Climate Visitor. I don't want to jinx it. We could see this pool a little bit towards survey or even towards that beacon building on the choke point exiting out of Skyhook north of Fragment West. We're gonna have to see with some of these uh, circle consoles from the legends that are gonna be able to scan that, the control legends that we've been seeing as a mainstay legend between a lot of these compositions. But I'm also interested at the consistent 50-50 we've been seeing at Overlook to the north side, Game of Jones duking it out again. Yeah, I mean, look, we've seen a lot of contests throughout the weeks of scrims specifically happening at Overlook. A lot of people wanting to claim that for their own, especially in the NA region later today as well. But let's jump on board a little bit with the Pioneers, your winners of map number two, and kind of see how they split up Lava Fissure. And they also get the Mirage Atois. So you can see that it's going to be Dell that likely lands over there, gets the loot from the party, hits the the tower to kind of jump back in and join up with the teams. But we talk about loot patterns, right? Especially on your drop stop POI. You don't really have a good bit of time to loot if your POI is contested in Game of Drones, getting poked and prodded from above. But Torj able to get in the tower and try to get a line of sight on the members Ooh. of Dynasty and try to find some good opening damage for them. You saw that Rose that uh, Seer just tossed out to the side after using his heirlooms right there too. Just trying to get away, trying to put that down on the casket of this team now as they try to wrap around the other side. It's Dynasty that they keep meeting up with out here. A little side angle right now that Torch needs to watch out for. I mean, look, Torch has got an R9 and an alternator. If you're going to drop off on spot and immediately fight, that's kind of what you want. You want a PK, you want an SMG, you want to be able to close the distance. But if they're going to go ahead and push comes to shove and just really catch you off guard, no one was watching their back. Oh, and they wanted to restabilize. That's what they were fixing it on so much. They had the number advantage. Can they clutch it out? Mania falling low. He had to reload. He's playing off the knockdown shield, but Torch has the health advantage. Oh, Torch has the health and is ready to put this thing to bed. Dynasty eliminated your first team out of the lobby and now the reset coming in. That's exactly what they needed to do. And they're pretty isolated over here, right? So typically through this contest, no matter how long it's going to take, no one's really going to rotate out here just yet, given that information. You know, those teams that have the controller players, they're going to look to hit the ring console and immediately begin rotating towards their zone. Overlook so far out on the right side, that I feel like it's a nice place to have that 50-50 and not have to worry about a third party. Yeah, 100%. Nobody's going to contest them. And if anything, they could even backtrack. I know Overlook has a ring console that they could take advantage of so they can take their time, loot around an extra if they need to, maybe contest another team rotating in the edge of the circle. KCP in a fight themselves over at Skyhook. I believe it's heroes that are playing right underneath them and with the information of the exhibition. Let's see what Pioneers gets to do. Oh, I'm excited. PK in hand and a little bit of wingman action, but it's going to be that portal from Wraith in the stairway that forces oh. Sir Del into it. He's going to take immense damage going through it. And Zane, I love the positioning behind the Wraith portal, waiting for someone to kind of go through and be that fragger and get that opening damage that Zane is so well known for. But to be able to buy his team a little bit more time to go ahead and reset on that health, you look at Naske already fully healed and they can take this fight into their own hand on Hero. Oh, he missed the little lip of the ledge, but it's fine. Yeah, he's playing off the logo, but he's by himself. He isolated himself. Where is he gonna go? It's a 2v1 right now and they're out of the line of sight of the rest of his team. One knock, they trade one for one now as KCP only has Sir Dell left. Oh, it's gonna be Dell needing to clutch it up and oh, he's going for the res. What? This is an absolute level of trust. If you have an IGL, right, that is screaming res me, res me, which I know Naske is doing. He's like, stick it, it's crazy. I was watching it in scrims. You know that's exactly how it is. Now Dell with the wingman finding good damage, able to get Zane, the fragger, up and allow him to shine while Dell can hit a bat and reset as well. They may still be able to get the res off onto Naske. 
Oh man, it'd be so crazy. Let's jump into a quick listening with KCB to see how they're gonna play this advantage. So let's get you on all ultimate hype. Play yeah. together, full send She's facing, facing. Yeah. Wait, she's canceling it now? Yeah, she canceled it. Nasky, crawl this side, bro. I'm climbing on him. I'm flying no, up, I'm flying up. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to you now. She dropped, inside. She canceled it. Nice. What are we doing, Tal? You were doing the gritty. Long, long time. Ah, shit. I full sent the left side and she took like aces. Yeah, I want you on the same. Oh, okay. And that shit. I've rest. I didn't yeah. rest. Dude, yeah, that yeah. catalyst on their team is fucking. <clears throat> oh, they've rest. I didn't yeah. rest. Dude, yeah, that yeah, yeah. catalyst on their team hit the gritty on them, slid over his head, and he missed a whole mag. No way. No fucking hit the gritty on them, slid over his head, and he missed a whole mag. No way. No cap. Also, their race was kind of good, though, huh? Ah, uh, words of wisdom, KCP feeling that exhilarating adrenaline after coming out on top from a rather long fight, longer than they were expecting, longer than they'd like, but they're at least in that next circle, could take that breather reset right now, because nobody is in the area to contest them. You can see right now, as we take a look at the overhead map, no team is in the northwest side to try to third-party KCP. They'll also have a pretty nice rotation into that next circle on the north side of where the circle is going to be pulling eventually once we have that pulled up for you but then taking a look at the other teams that are taking their time to rotate in alliance playing by the edge wondering if they're still running the rampart we know that they try to bring out the rampart originally they haven't found much success with it and it does actually look like yuki is still walking the rampart so they're still sticking to their guns with this different composition when they make the rotation to try to get that next ring console yeah i guess i'm kind of just waiting to see how that's going to pan out for them yuki did take an early exit in map one so we didn't get a large presence from the rampart there so hopefully they make their journey onto that next zone and we can see just what yuki and the sheila pairing are going to do but meanwhile we're on board with they're making their rotation they kind of are on the very very outskirts and there's a lot of teams that haven't necessarily made their way in so gatekeeping the chokeholds on world's edge are something that's going to allow you to play aggressively and get that kp Talking about teams now just trying to share some of the space. The arc star gets sent out. Seer attack to try to get more information into Chaku, who's playing in the corner. But here's the difference. Sherovic being on the Cossack. Yes, he's taking a lot of damage. He needs to pop a medical or a Phoenix kit if he has one. It doesn't look like he does right now. He's using smaller heals with the shield cell. And okay, he does gonna pop the he is gonna pop the med kit. And it's Maestro Gaming who has the high ground. The difference is, is that with the Cossack, they could bunker down with those barrels easier here. Sonya, yes, could disrupt the vision. Yes, put on those spikes against these doors and reinforce them but they have to respect playing off of the same building right now as that other team yeah so let's go ahead and talk about this more if you're going to see catalyst you've got two doors that you have the ability to reinforce and then attacks just getting mm -hmm. punished by a nox gas trap that's rather unfortunate and you see fire beavers trying to make their way into the climatizer epi type area but Here's the deal. As this zone is starting to kind of close and move over towards survey camp and epicenter, let's think about the teams that land there that we really haven't seen too much of thus far. Horizon Union, that's their drop spot POI. And if that's what they need to find success here thus far in split two, this could be the map for them to kind of pop off. But you got to get through Fire Beavers first. Yeah, and the tricky part about Epi too is that high to low ground difference between some teams that could take a skyward dive and get in that sniper tower in the middle have the high ground over them and then basically call in a bait for a third party even a fourth party fire beavers with their game plan though and the way that they're running this comp we know that they've been pretty aggressive they've been able to clean up some kp after that second game didn't take the dub but then they got the dub game one with about 18 kp to their name so just overlooking any of the teams that could be taking their time slowly rotating from the south side of the map they want to be able to get in control over where this next circle is going to be pulling if they have the available information for that circle circle beacon this is so interesting i know that vex was talking about playing zone more often or not but look at where they're located on the map not necessarily super hard edge but just on the outskirts and moving towards that next zone so yeah they're a little further into that zone than usual but still on the outskirts of that next zone when you're looking at teams like la cite de france they're over still on the left side you've got totem still very hard edge as long as foot as well and fire beavers oh. running into a little bit of early chaos here on the bridge 
Wonder here who's on the other side right now. If they decided to rotate a little early, now they're involved with Vex at the same time. This is the other team that can also start rotating away from Epicenter. If Horizon Union also want to get involved in this fight, they're definitely hearing what's going on. But it's about playing on the edge for that team too for this next circle if they have that next set of information. Fire Beavers do lose out on OJ Rain, and they're forced to see what they could do to work with here. They got the gold Evo on nine impulse. You just restabilize just as quickly, but if they could try to get that banner, that'd be fantastic. But they're getting pinged by the other side by Epi. Yeah, as all these teams make their way into this next zone, it's going to be really, really tough for them to find a clean reset and playing your life down a player might be the key to success here. They've already picked up six eliminations, so now you just have to couple that with some placement points. But Vex, looking to put their staple here thus far, they went ahead and maybe they pushed in a little bit early because they were kind of mirroring the way Fire Beavers was rotating in and they were able to grab at least one elimination, which isn't really... It's kind of far from what they're used to, but really focusing on moving into survey camp already. Matape oh. gets picked off on rotation, and Tyler and Unlucky are forced to throw all the damage forward. Sometimes you have to push forward and fight for a spot, or you're going to get caught out from the back. And you can see the reinforcement being so strong because you can isolate a member of an enemy team outside, and you can take that 1v1. That just shows you how powerful Catalyst can be. And that was against Alliance, too. We saw Yuki go down. I saw the random rapper coming outside of the building, playing the Shining as Jack Nicholson, not expecting Vex Gaming to be on the other side of those doors. Losing out on two players, though, and playing up the other side. The Missile Storm coming in from effect, coming in clutch to make sure they can solidify that knock here, too. Vex in a difficult situation, unlucky playing right behind the two double knockdowns. Oh, in effect, just running through the middle of survey camp, trying to reunite with Hackis. Unlucky trying to reset here on the underside, but still getting poked and prodded from all different angles. This is why resetting endgame is so challenging, but Pioneers are winners of map number two, taking out Game of Drones and kind of going for a nice reset. This is pretty isolated on the north side once again, so choosing to take really smart fights, knowing that you are not going to get third partied, especially on World's Edge, which is such a third party heavy map and then claiming this rock to play from this rock is such a power position is this alliance getting the res with the beacon right there i'm wondering if we're gonna see yuki right back into this fight kcp though trying to play this smart i also love this position from kcp let's see the circle continuously pulls more towards where ascend was predicting then they can immediately do the 50 50 with nobody to contest them from behind to then rotate in that direction if now we get to see where the circle's gonna be pulling towards survey camp they have the high ground and they know that their backs are going to be cleared as long as the other squads leaving out of climatizer won't contest them on the north side they can also play off the lip by the train tracks to actually get a nice head glitch over the other teams that want to contest them by survey. So this is a really good spot for KCP to hold. I think taking that early fight and claiming this spot early was everything because now they have a free LOS to everyone that's going to be rotating out of Climatizer. And you've got Zane having that G7 scout handy is going to help for that mid to long range. Sure, it's got a bruiser, but honestly, the bruiser and the 3X are one of my favorite scopes for the G7 scout. It's just very clean as opposed to, I think the 2x4 is a little more kind of visual clutter, but that's personal preference there. I mean, these players, they're going to hit their shots regardless. But I think that's going to be really beautiful and vexed claiming that they're a zone player now they've already occupied one of the buildings they've gotten the full reset which is absolutely disgusting yeah tyler is back and he's ready to fight but first off he's got a reset inside of this building get what he's got to work with right now looking at here i believe alliance was also able to get yuki back in which is huge that means we had two reses go down at survey successfully 13 squads left and reply told him get sent right back to the lobby a nice little cheeky angle right there on the top of that ice and the seat of the France are going to be able to now rotate into that next circle play by the edge but they really only have the lip of this hill to play off of for natural line of sight as we see their rotation they're just very much hard on the outside trying to watch their back making sure that no one is mirroring them from behind because the last thing you want is to get completely walked up on as you make your way down on the southern edge of this ring they want to keep high ground going into survey camp early it's tough right you think about your rotations and buildings that you would want to play for a zone they can be such beautiful positions, but if you take them too early, they're almost bad. So this is the challenging part, right? We've got Horizon walking up on La Cite de France. The Dark Veil is out, and now you've got to get on the aggressive. 
Let's jump into a quick listening with Lacita de France to see how they're going to be playing around the wall. Je suis pas avec ta Il marche. Tu peux chill dans 50. Viens sur moi. Oh man, such a difficult situation. It's exactly what we were talking about too, Tiff. Sometimes these early rotations could literally spell your doom and force you to be in a pinch situation. Horizon fully taking advantage of that, playing from right behind their backs. Vex also applying some of that extra pressure. It's about that hillside that they had a lack of cover to play around with between the fact that they also didn't have rocks to play around too to get out of the line of sight of Horizon Union. Now, on the other side, Horizon Union have the ice to their right, have some rocks to their left, playing off the lip of this hill so that way they can also stay out of the line of sight of vex in case they want to get involved in this fight i mean you've got to deal with all of the players that have already moved into that next zone heavy into survey camp you still have kcp running the gamut of that northern area and horizon union faced on the outside not in that next zone as it is starting to collapse around them having to take a 3v3 on the outskirts and you're going to draw all the attention to everyone that's already in zone knowing that if they need to clean up a fight they just need to turn around and look behind them to just throw a couple bullets. So Horizon has their work cut out for them, despite this being their drop spot POI. Taylor, play this now with the Muscle Swarm moving into Ascend. Couldn't get away from the circle in time without getting pressure. Look at Luka, he's trying to get out of their line of sight. They get taken down. That's for eSports that was on the other side of that wall into the lovely line of sight of outplay that are holding on top of this high ground. Eight squads left. Let's not forget where KCP was situated in all of this when they were playing off the north side away from Climatizer. Don't think they're going to be in the next circle. But this is big with Vex Gaming also playing off the low gun. They got Tyler up late, so they need all the loot that they can work with. I mean, look, Tyler already down on Lucky and Matafe are going to have to take this fight without him because he is full. So now oh. down to a two stack and it's Horizon that is forced to fight for this building and fight for the space in that end game zone. And sure, you haven't necessarily moved in, but all the seer attacks going out and looking for that information. And yes, you have a catalyst reinforced door, but it may not be enough. You can see it's going to be down. They're maneuvering around it and Horizon Union still a three man stack on the outside of this building, not in the next zone. So they are going Going to have to continually fight forward so let's look to phoenix at one point looking at them he did not have dark veil looks like finally has it available to them and i'm sure we're going to see it come out here shortly but they have to contest with vex inside they try to contest this too with the spikes it's going to be difficult oh the reinforce coming in clutch amazing timing right there arc star getting sent out while horizon union is forced to play off the back end of this building wonder how those comms sounded like too when you saw tyler just push outside of this building originally he's getting pinged by these spikes he's going to delete that immediately he knows how low the opposing team is from the inside of what's left of vex but they have to be careful how these play this or else the third party is going to be able to eat this building up for free yeah, something really interesting is catalysts are immune to other catalysts abilities and those piercing spikes have 300 damage to destroy them. So it just takes a huge second and you got oh. Chase Savage going down, Urban going down and Phoenix last oh. alive and just like that, Unlucky clutches up with a team wipe for Horizon unit. It's a PK plus Unlucky equals a dream. Sometimes you hit those nines. Not in the world of Vex Gaming, you don't. Not with that PK, but they gotta get out of here into the light of sight of this team. The walk comes out, but they still get pinged. They see exactly where they're at. It's Maestro Gaming that was waiting for them. Look, we've got to talk about the consistency that Maestro Gaming has been having here thus far in match day number one. They are going the distance. They are making it to these end game scenarios as well as Phoenix Legacy. You can see on the upper hand of your screen, but KCP forced off the rocket, wasn't into the next zone, and they literally have the most minuscule amount of cover. And check that out. Yuki oh, with no. the Sheila through the Dark Veil, taking down Zane. We were talking about this. How was <laughs> Rampart? going to work for Alliance and they are putting on a show right now.
Say hello to my little friend as they clean up Pioneer's Alliance on the other side, reaping the benefits of using something different that nobody else has really been able to take advantage of. It's the Sheila, it's the Rampart, and Alliance have a bit of this open area and the pillboxes to work with when it comes to some natural cover. Look how many teams now are neighboring the other side of that building on top of the rock. So you highlighted my Astro Gaming. There's a reason why this team right now is sitting third in the overall leaderboards after those last two games. They're still showing up out here. They're in a good position, but once they're forced to rotate outside of this rock, it's going to be chaos for the two teams that are sharing that building in front of them. Yeah, I mean, you've got the three stack of Phoenix Legacy inside the building. You have Eternal sitting just on the right side playing their roof, and Alliance on the left and Maestro Gaming going to have to move immediately as this ring starts to push on to them. They do have a Valk available to them, so that may be something that they look to utilize, but very risky end game. If you can deter all the people to look away from you, that would be most beneficial. But Eternal utilizing Watson and Catalyst, two controller legends here to navigate the end game zone play. But I was so excited about Alliance. They're actually closing the gap and pushing the building early to try and get a little bit of the damage. But all the teams that are going to be collapsing on them, they should just stay out in cover and look to third party. That rampart coming in, especially from Yuki, that's what my paralysis demon looks like. And they are playing off the low ground of this building nicely. Look at the barriers getting sent up. Maestro gets beamed. They get one knock, leaving rugby incredibly low. Tax is taking some of that circle damage, and the spikes are also blocking out where they can start rotating from. The third one to get involved. A nice little cheeky angle from underneath the stairs as Bambino now takes on top of the roof. Oh, I love this positioning here for Eternal. The longer they can hold high ground, the better. But look at Yuki navigating with the walls on the underside. The question is, does Yuki have the Sheila available to him for this endgame? Phoenix Legacy trying to hold off on the inside, but the Dark Veil coming out is going to allow Eternal to make that rotation to the other side of that zone ahead of the time. You've got the Jenny trying to go down. Now the question is, how is Alliance going to navigate this now that they're technically on the other side of Eternal? Let's find out. They can close in the gap little by little with the barriers if no one's going to try to contest them off the rip. Look at Sabs. Look at Imp right behind them, though. You got to take to your back. Here comes the Sheila. David Redford from Yuki as he gets a knockoff in the air. He is clearing out the rest of the competition. Alliance. Yuki goes down. Avex says, get back into that circle. This is my hill. He tries to contest them. And a third will come out on top. They're the ones with the healing advantage. They're the ones that take game number three on World's Edge. Vicky, I... That was the gnarliest thing that I've witnessed in a very long time. We're in the free cam shot, and everyone's just looking at Yuki's rampart with a Sheila in the hand, just aiming straight up. Rain Day, I've got to hear your thoughts about it. I mean, congrats to Eternal withstanding that onslaught from Alliance. I'm muted. I'm muted myself because I, I couldn't get in your guys' ears during that. I was screaming. I was too hyped. The fact that we saw the Rampart ending, I know everyone's like, is it real? Yeah, it's real. It's happening. <laughs> Will we see it again, though? But what a moment from Eternal. What a great hold from Phoenix Legacy to make it difficult. Sabs and, and Imp running in behind Alliance. It was a great showcase of two different complete playstyles. We saw the Catalyst and we saw the attempted counter to the Catalyst. It ended up being, I believe, the Catalyst team that won, but Eternal, they really did a great job over that final circle to make an impact, and that's what you need. Eternal, a team we hadn't talked too much about going into this, Vicky, but they have certainly made it, so we have to talk about them now. Yeah, can we talk about the Chef's Kiss from the wall placement, too, coming in oh, yeah. from mm -hmm. Doctors? Eternal played that rotation as best as they could. What Maestro couldn't do at the very end when they were getting pinged underneath the building, basically stuck between Alliance and Eternal. Eternal took advantage of na navigating through the delayed sight lines that Phoenix Legacy couldn't take advantage of. So that was amazing rotation from them. And despite even having to fight on top of the high ground, that slight lip of that hill, they heard the Rampart coming out with the Sheila and they still were able to fixate their attention on making sure effect is not a problem. Yeah, and that's the thing too, Tiff. You know, the, the Sheila, the Rampart, I mean, these are all great ideas. And when you look at them technically, yes, it destroys doors. Yes, it, it, it would be difficult to keep your piercing spikes up. The Sheila can spray and pray, find people behind. But there's not that much time. I mean, it often comes down to a little moment. I think that last moment too came down to a missed punch by Yuki because the first punch worked and knocked the player into the ring on the low ground. The second punch whiffed, and I think that gave uh, a member of Eternal a chance to go ahead and respond with some bullets and, and finish off Yuki there.
Yeah, it was really tough, right? You saw the player kind of punching, trying to reload, and it was just like a war of attrition at that point. But what I want to think back to in that endgame circle is if you just go back to why Alliance pushed that building in survey camp initially, right? Because they had the positioning that mm. Eternal eventually used the catwall to take away from Alliance. And I have to think, had they maybe not pushed up so early on to that building, would they have won that game? I don't know, just a couple of what ifs there that I'm just like looking at thinking, I'm like, no. was that the game losing positioning for them? Yeah, I know it is really interesting. And sometimes I think that's the, the way it goes with Apex. Somebody tries to get that position, but in the same time, yes, it would have been good, but if staying back and allowing another team to do that, keeping your resources, showing up a little late, it might've been better. But let's take a look at the highlights. Game three ended in amazing fashion. We got to see some Rampart. We got to see some Catalyst, but you two, you casted it. Tiff, heading with you to kick off these highlights. Kind of what did you see here in our final game on World's Edge? I mean, it was really cool to see those initial contests and then Pioneers kind of running into this fight here. We, we got the comms and it was really unique to hear them look at this fight afterwards, right? They're like, whoa, that took way too long because you have to think about the rotation. Teams that are looking to make themselves into that next zone, there's typically like a running clock of when they need to get in or get out of a certain POI to set themselves up for success. But this play right here from Vexed Gaming as they move in, especially with Unlucky on the Catalyst, throwing up the reinforcement on the wall. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually tried to play Catalyst, but there is a 0.5 second delay that it takes to reinforce a door. And you can actually do that while holding your gun and throwing out your piercing spikes, which is why I think they had so much success trying to take this area. And it was looking rather bleak, right? It did not go smoothly, but they pulled it off. Yeah, and this was really Horizon causing trouble for Vex. And you could just see the way I describe Catalyst too. She's a controller, but she has an element of offensive control, throwing those piercing spikes down, kind of taking space away from you, while also the wall saying, do not cross. Vicky, it ended up though being Alliance on the Rampart who started to turn the tide here. We thought, is this the game we're gonna finally see them take control? She took out that Sheila, and you already know what business that means. And we saw the end play right now. Oh, you already know. I mean, it goes beyond that. That was the Rambo machine gun effect basically coming through and playing off the little slight barrier. You see effect punching the rest of the competition out. Eternal, though, had not only the health advantage, but they also were able to clearly just climb up on the top. Thankfully, at the very end, with Bambino still alive, Eternal was able to take control over the high ground right there. Beautiful play from not only the melee punches, but also working around the Sheila that was obviously working out very well for Alliance at the end game. I believe it was Yuki though that did originally go down first for Alliance, which allowed the rest of the lobby that was left to make sure that they could hold on to the high ground on that hill. Listen, our job is to tell the stories. It's to break it down. It's to assimilate the pro to the casual and to the upper level casual who are watching right now. But our job isn't to play in the pro league. That's why when we have a little bit of time to give you analysis from someone who's in it, it's always a little bit exciting. So let's bring on our guest for halftime. Something new we're introducing this season. It's Graceful joining us for a little bit of a halftime recap. What is up, Graceful? We saw you in London last. It is great to have you on here today. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. So far, the games in Pro League have been amazing. Um, I think most of the teams that I expected to be at the top are still kind of at the top, KCP, Fire Beavers, etc. Other teams are already stepping up to it as well. There is six games in total, and the play style of teams changes drastically based off of the maps as well. A good example would be Vex plays a lot of zone slash uh, edge. They, they play both, actually. They play a lot of edge on World's Edge, and when they come to Stormpoint, they play hardcore zone. So it's going to be fun to see the drastic change on teams that's play style, yeah. You know, great little recap there. I want to get your thoughts as well in terms of the concept we've seen of KCP showing up with this new roster. They won Pro League Day in EMEA as well in Split 1. They seem like they're doing a good job here. But you, as many people know, having joined Element 6 with Case Winnie and Slayers, you know what it's like, that honeymoon phase of getting onto a new team that's got great players and winning. Talk to us. Do you think KCP has really found the right fit with Zane? Or is this a little bit of something that, you know, they're going to have to figure out over the course of the season? Um, It's very hard to tell. Like you said, there's a honeymoon session. But the hardest part is not because of new players addition or their strengths. The hard part is figuring them out as we go. Scrims is not really a good example or a measurement of how good your team is with this new player or addition to the team. 
Um, we only have a set amount of practice, which is then Pro League, and then, then international scrims are kind of hot and cold, and then the real stage is LAN. So I think Zane as a player is definitely a good fit for the team, but how well they will mesh will, will go up to them. It'll be the same for us on E6 as well, due to the fact that we don't have the... Oh, sorry. Well, they'll tell me this as well, Graceful, in terms of E6, and then I'll open it a little bit in case Tiff and Vic want to ask you a question. In terms of E6, how's that going? I noticed you guys were playing Wraith and Scrims. You seem to be keen on that character. Was it the portal change? Talk to me a little bit about what you're thinking heading into Pro League. The main reason why we're playing it is because we're still figuring out the roles on the team. Um, Slayers and Swinney, both of them are very high firepower capabilities, same as for me. But me being the only mouse and keyboard player on the team currently, we're looking to get both of them into good roles where they can make a lot of plays and put a lot of damage, essentially. So I'm currently on the Seer. We're playing Wraith because Swinney needs to be fast on awareness and decision-making. And before, it's mm. very hard. I've always been on this side. A lot of people aren't there. But I think that it's better to have the person in command to decide what to do than for me to be a middleman. Like, I shouldn't tell you, mm. go from A to B to C, and if it doesn't work, panic and do something. It's better if I'm in that mm. spot to take the decision to do that. So that's why we're putting Swinney on the Wraith, so he can do exactly how he envisions it, and it plays out perfectly. Vic, Tiff, anything for Graceful before we get into some of these results? No, nah, my, br my brain just started, like, lighting up when he mentioned that, <laughs> because I was thinking of some of the teams that I've been watching in NA, how they had the IGL essentially on Wraith as opposed to Seer. So I think that was a really, like, I thank you so much for that. But how do you think kind of the classification of these legends and kind of switching around the perks with the controller class only being able to have that ring information. I believe I saw one of the teams playing two controller legends, no recon. So very interesting there. But do you think a lot of people have been trying to like kind of redefine their roles based on the classifications? Yeah, so the roles are really good. I like them a lot, but they didn't really change things up. Um, the Legends power picks, as you can see, Valk being the best mobility character that's adaptable for any zone, Seer being god tier with wall hack for 25 seconds despite the nerfs, Catalyst being a new addition, very viable but hard to play, but still everybody is, you know, experimenting, which I really, really like. So Catalyst, in my opinion, is the peak of Apex, Seer is the, the lower part of Apex. Um, Bangalore, Cossack, Watson, Crypto, all of them super solid, always have been viable, will always stay viable. Um, they need to rearrange a little bit, but overall, super good step in the right direction. Yeah. I love that. I, I think that you made a good point. You said Catalyst is really hard to play. And I mean, I was talking to a lot of people yesterday and they're like, I was literally playing for an hour, practicing different cat wall lineups in buildings to try and apply those to my play style. So a lot of people have been putting in the work and the effort to play Catalyst. So seeing it done really well, which I know we got to highlight that clip from Unlucky. Did you see that play where they moved in on the building in survey camp and he reinforces the wall and isolates that member of the team on the outskirts? It's just beautifully done. It's like a work of art when you see that. He catches them. So up guys, the uh, I, I, uh, we, we wish we could keep you here forever, Graceful. We do have to keep it moving though in terms of the show, but I want to get your reaction before we let you go to our match three standings, which we're going to bring up here overall. After three games on World's Edge, this is where it goes. Match three results here. Eternal, I mean, little comment on Eternal and their play to get that big 26-point kill in that final, uh, final three that we just saw, Graceful. As we can see here, Eternal, Phoenix, Mistro, they outplayed a lot of teams that weren't considered, in quotes, strong or land-worthy, are super hungry this season. I love to see it in all of Pro League Spits across all the regions. All the teams are there to show up right now. I think the last LAN inspired and motivated everyone. Seeing them perform at the highest level in these lobbies right now in our region is, is, is really good. They've always had the potential in scrims. It's hard to show off in scrims, mm. but when it comes up to the main stage, popped off. Yeah, when the lights are on, that's that's when it matters, right? So these teams starting exactly. to show that they can do it both behind the scenes and uh, when it is main stage. Let's take a look at the overall results too, Graceful. Any surprises here? Maybe Maestro, maybe Eternal being 3-4? Or just how does it feel overall half half the day done in EMEA? So it's only half the day done. It's hard to tell. Um, as you can see, all the, the top tier teams that have made land every single time pretty much are slowly crawling up and securing their spots at the topper Upper half, uh, upper half. Um, some other teams are fighting for the middle part, but yeah, Maestro Eternal. Maestro specifically, I think, is 
it's not they have always been here they just haven't been in the light they have always been here now they they got picked up by my show and they're they're popping off i'm super happy fire beavers pioneers they're god tier everybody knows <laughs> eternal also stepping up i love to see <laughs> All the other people step up. We, we need more to speak about the rest of the teams and not just the upper end. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, this is how you get talked about, right? You win games, you get in the top threes, you get points. Then the narrative has to go around you. Graceful, congratulations on everything with E6 that you have transitioned to and what is upcoming for your season. We look forward to watching you guys play. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. Bye. Graceful, everybody. You'll see him play tomorrow with element six case winning in slayers and vicky tiff and i want to get your thought vicky great to hear the insight from someone who's in the thick of things as a pro this season it's a good thing they, they ripped him off uh, you know basically at the very end because i was going to talk his brain off about his thoughts and not just the legend compositions but what he's got to look out for in group c since that is the group that him and e6 are going to be playing in because there's a lot of heavy hitters that i'm excited to see for tomorrow but it's always nice to hear graceful thoughts and his uh, impression of not just the meta but how the other teams are playing i think he really yeah. highlighted a lot of important points that some people tend to overlook well, that's the thing, too. You could see how it works when you're playing in scrims, when these teams are trying to come up and make a name for themselves in the pro league. It's inspiring. Hey, and if you're inspired as well, you might have a chance to come up as well and be a part of the pro league. The Challenger Circuit registration, it's open and ends on March 22nd. The tournament starts on March 25th. And you can go on battlefly.com in order to sign up. So make sure that if you are inspired by this action, you think you've got what it takes join the challenger circuit and prove it all right we've got game four coming up very very soon in fact so soon it's right now as i believe we will be heading into storm point for the first time and this is going to be very exciting i'm not sure if i am here with tiff or if it's vicky yeah he's going to take a break so it's going to be me and tiff Rocking into it straight away tiff no break we're going into game four i know the fans are happy about it i'm happy about it too and uh, let's kick off Storm Point. Look, I couldn't be more excited, Brain Day. We get to sit here, see what's going to happen on that first Storm Point map of the year. We look at the drop spots. Vex not actually switching things up. They are going to remain consistent and keep that drop spot POI of Launchpad. They've got the hot zone. They have a lot of unique capabilities here. But Checkpoint, I spoke with Sabs ahead of time. She's over on Phoenix Legacy. They're landing in Checkpoint, which they were worried that they were actually going to be contested. And turns out they are not going to be contested. But start a fight over here in Cascades, getting a little early action from the team of Danish. Early contest on Storm Point, risky for both teams. But there could be value here if you come out on top. That was one of my biggest criticisms with KCP at land. They contested so many times. Natsuki said, let him cook. Well, he didn't end up serving anything at the end of the day. You got to hope start a fight, have a different plan here. They've already got one, though. So this is looking better as they chase the others down the hill. They're going to rotate up on the high ground a little dozy dough. But it seems like start a fight with three should be able to handle this one. I mean, triple blue, but you hear the shotgun coming in that's going to take out Blast Lackey going in and able to deal the finishing blow to Danish. And now a well-deserved 3KP for the beginning. Let's cut on over to Maestro. They're getting down to business over at the wall and finding themselves incredibly low in Game of Drones going to fall. Maestro wanting to keep that dominance going forward. And Ooh. I've been really impressed with this roster. We were asking, like, how was Tax going to perform? Typically, most of the experience coming in from that challenger circuit level, but Pioneers, the action's not stopping, Rain Day. I know, this is crazy, KCP. I just mentioned it. They are totally fine with an early game fight. And that's the thing that you've got to know going up against KCP and KCP got to know going into these tense moments the quality of the team that you are going to be going up against is going to change in the highest of high levels at land it is not as easy as doing this so they still decide they're going to be willing to go for it i think they will also have a little bit of, of an advantage too having added zane to this roster he's going to be one of those players if you look at na like verholz who can sometimes clutch it up all by himself because of the talent in terms of aiming so kcp make it out alive Game of Drones will go down, and we 17 squads here to kick off our match in Storm Point. 
Yeah, it's really interesting. When you think about seeing a crypto drone in your vicinity, there's only two teams in the lobby that are running crypto at this point in time. That's gonna be Phoenix Legacy and Ascend, typically Cashero on that. But we know that like Phoenix Legacy, they land checkpoint and they play that early rotate. So they're the ones that have actually already made their way into North Pad. They're gonna hit a ring console look for that information and then start to act upon it. But with KCP starting off so incredibly strong, moving Dell onto that Watson, they've got the Jenny and now they can just really set up here in North Pad at the intersection of the next zone. They've already got that information. Yeah, they feel it's gonna be a Northern pull. They landed at Mill. They made a fast rotation there, but they have not stopped the ability or at least the desire to try to keep fighting. We'll see if that ends up happening. Over on the high North side as well, SMS making a move. We know Phoenix Legacy is there with them, and we know that actually Fire Beavers from the south have a long way to go. So they'll be playing a little bit of edge, and it'll give them some time to gather some resources and make it into this moment while KCP still fighting for their lives, still on top of things. Zane with a purple, that's scary. And I think they're gonna go in for it, trying to find a couple of picks, and there's one for Zane! Oh my goodness! The man just doesn't miss. He does not miss. And the ability that this Pioneers team just worked, putting Zane on Valkyrie gives them the movement that's necessary to try and navigate and kind of pinching that fight. Nasky getting caught out away from Dell and Zane. Now they have to kind of go and get that res. And you can see Vex is going to take this time. Getting that early opening knock is going to allow them the ability to push straight in to this fight and they're sitting on two purples of gold and looking to essentially collapse around kcp dell down once again that nemesis is so punishing and nasty going down there was really the big issue as to why they weren't able to stabilize i think that's going to be kcp out and all that early fighting maybe for not i think they did pick up at least five or six kills after that so it's not a terrible game not a great game though to kick off your first one on storm point but nasky going down you know that was the problem tiff because if you have a catalyst there you can throw some piercing spikes on that staircase or on that doorway and kind of at least give yourself some time for vex not to three man push you right away and i just think that that really set the tone for vex being able to run uninhibited at the rest of kcp and they will be out and vex have the best position now heading into top 15. Yeah, and just look at the changes that they've already enacted. You've got Tyler now on Bangalore. Matafe off Seer, moved on to the Watson. So just some little bit of changes that helps them be able to anchor down and show presence and control space on Storm Point. But Morningstar is currently in 20th place, looking to find themselves some good success here. They were able to grab one down already earlier from KCP, and they've got a knock on to post kill. So Ascend going into a rather unfortunate positioning here. You can see the veil is going to fall and Ascend caught in the middle of Dynasty and just not where you want to be. But they are having all that advantage. Luka going to fall. How do you regain from that? Bit chaotic. Enemy. I would say my theme of the first few minutes of this Storm Point game. Everyone testing each other. Nobody really playing too patiently. Maybe feeling confident that there's more Storm Point games to come. Maybe trying to just start things off for teams who have maybe not had that type of run in World's Edge. Either way, though, we've got five teams down very early in a region and a lobby that has kind of taken their time. And we'll see if that continues. We don't think Kashira is going to be able to make too much out of this one, though. Tiff, it may just be the end of Ascend as well. And they were trying to get more points desperately here. Look, if anyone can regain, it's going to be Kashera as that crypto utilizing the drone to grab the banners. But the moment he tries to bring that drone out, Dynasty is like, oh, no, we left the <laughs> wrong person alive. And they just utilize the seer attack to kind of end the drone. You kind of freeze up your abilities, freeze up any healing, and they just full send now ascend out of the lobby. And Dynasty has found themselves with two eliminations thus far. Just got to worry about placement kind of for the time being. But navigating this open terrain i kind of like making the decision just go see what's happening over at mm. down beast is there a fight that we have the ability to third party yeah and this is where you know when you clear out your back you have an opportunity Ooh. to look forward pretty easily there i was Obviously, wrong 
I was wrong, ring console. Ring console, very much more important. Let's talk about the positioning of these ring consoles. Rain, didn't mean to cut you off there, but you no, notice please. how they're, they're out in the open. They're kind yeah. of dangerous, similar to how the replicators are structured. So you have to be very smart about navigating when you're going to go ahead and hit that ring console because you have to interact with it for an extensive period of time. Luckily for them, they had the Bangalore smoke them out. And felt pretty confident to do it, right? I, I definitely agree with you that there's just been a little bit of an adjustment in terms of how do we how do we navigate these? Now we've got two things to scan instead of the traditional one of the survey beacon that would give us that ring information. It bodes well as well for you know getting rid of that problem, having crypto on your side for survey beacons. But the ring console no longer an opportunity. All of those players who do it, you know, you have the ability for them to now be kind of out in the open. So you've got to figure out a way to support them. The smoke, you're going to see that a lot. Even if you have a digi threat, you're going to have a weapon that probably cannot finish someone off from that far. You can see the enemy scan there from OJ Rain taking up that survey beacon. They'll have information as to who's in front of them. And remember, Tiff, they're lagging behind. So this is going to be crucial for Taskmaster, Nine Impulse, Noj Rain to figure out where's the best route for us to, to find, especially also where should we play since a lot of these late game spots are already going to be taken. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, they land Cenote Caves. That's all the way down on the southwestern side of the zone. Everyone knows Storm Point is very, like the terrain, very top to bottom. The north yeah. side of the map going to be that highest positioning. So Fire Beavers, they do have a Valk that will allow them to get a little bit further by the sky if they need to. But navigating some of these choke points when they're rotating into the south side of checkpoint right now, this can be tough. And we see a lot of end games happen, particularly here and you can get caught out so badly by these trees. And you can see they're already finding a little bit of resistance from a team that's kind of occupied on the north point of checkpoint, but good for them getting that poke fight, right? That tells them, hey, there's a team up ahead. How are we gonna navigate this? Do we have the Skyward Dive available to us? Should we need to kind of get in front of them? Yeah, one of the greatest things about this too, and, and Fire Beavers as well, is this edge play is working really nicely for them. And you can see with the 43 points leading out in this lobby, they won game one. Oh, and this is a great showcase of the assault class as well. Look at the extra resources. Nine and Pulse able to carry a little extra ammo on the Bangalore also. They've got pretty much ring console survey and assault on this team. So a nice lineup. But this team is also really good at being flexible on edge, they've got information with OJ Rain on the Seer. They've got smokes to delay. And they've also got the, the bigger rotations with Valkyrie Tiff, which I think is making so much sense for me in this meta. If you're not gonna run the traditional kind of style, uh, you know, this is a really good approach for getting everything that you need. I mean, look at Oi Rain right there, getting uh, so much damage from that flat line, throwing out the focus of attention, seeing that that player is literally one HP in a dream. That forces that team to start having to play around the resetting of that team member. But Vexed over here, still in North Pat, engaging with Phoenix Legacy on a multitude of levels throughout this building. Phoenix on the bottom, kind of utilizing the Watson fences to prevent Vex from kind of getting in there and being hyper aggressive. But you can see they are constantly getting pinged by that Seer, giving the information over towards Vex. Not sure if this is one of those fights that would be really smart to take. Should Vex int on this? Can they expect to be followed up with another team nearby? And it's the ability to take that fight smartly, minimize the damage that you receive so you can focus your attention on to the next fight. Phoenix Legacy have done a good job getting into top fives, top threes. They're top five overall in the lobby right now. And they want to continue that way. Different style of getting the controller class and the recon class together. It's Crypto and Watson instead of the Catalyst that we have seen showcased. And I love this different dimension too, because you will be able to obviously hold down these areas really nicely. This low ground is almost impenetrable as long as you can kind of have coverage on both these angles with a few bullets back and sabs is totally making sure of that saw her in london and just a great signing as well of the seer competing here at this level yeah honestly it's really exciting and if you want to like get inspired but you see 
a female player in ALGS Pro League, like that's got to be such an inspiring thing for a lot of the women who are in competitive out there, especially to see them performing so well. And she's even kind of like a co-IGL of that team alongside Alpha as Alliance is working on their rotation. They are actually kind of mirroring the rotation we saw from Fire Beavers just maybe a minute or two behind going in from that south side of Checkpoint. So you know making your way up north we might have a little bit of congestion but they're still choosing to play rampart on storm point is this a little phoenix legacy versus vex a little uh in-home rivalry there potentially we also see uh unlucky trying to siege down the watson i think they know exactly where phoenix legacy is not sure if they want to push it yet great setup for the shielding both on reds one on gold that would be Tyler FPS on that. Matafe holding down kind of the anchor position on the Watson, just with a charge rifle, showing presence from such a distance. And that's a good reason why they're probably all on red Evo stiff. Yeah, that's really interesting, right? Maestro is out there kind of gunning into an engagement with Horizon, but Vex saw the opportunity to disengage from kind of poking at Phoenix Legacy underneath and just kind of turn their attention on to try and pick up some elimination. So yeah, Phoenix Legacy finding a little bit more safety from that engagement. You can kind of cohabitate this building, but let's take a look at Morningstars. They've decided to get kind of the catwalk portion of North Pad and take that high ground. And if you've got like a G7 Scout, a 3030, or maybe a sniper rifle in your hand, you can continuously work on just poking and prodding as these teams are making their rotation in. High ground here I like from SMS. This is one of those moments where you have some good areas to play, then you've got some terrible ones. And that, I feel, is where the highlight of Catalyst Wall is so important. The Dark Veil, we'll see if that plays a difference. Right now, Alliance going again for the counter. Composition, no Catalyst, but going for the Rampart instead. And I really, really love this. Alliance trying to siege up. Let's go ahead and listen in to them as they try to make this push happen. Presented by WD Black. He dropped, 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 we're just kind of out now. We're just holding this and out thing. Yeah, I got it. Is he on you guys, maybe? He might be on you guys. Come up and scan. I'm coming. 4 by 10 charge rifle. Sniper. Uh, you should not have a charge rifle now. You should... I mean, I got Lombo. It's fine. I got Lombo. We're just Valko thing from height and finding anything. That's all we can do. <laughs> We're just Valko thing from height and finding anything. That's all we can do. Nothing is kind right? No, nah, nothing. Okay, I'm for you. He's in the co I don't know if this is him or is someone else looting. I think someone else is looting. Pretty sure they all died. Where are the fool trying to get to, by the way? Below or in here? No, that's bad. Downstairs? Do we do that downstairs thing or no? Yuki, what are, what are your guns? What are your guns? Uh, R9 longbow. Just take the car. Take the car. Okay. Fucking run R9 car. Yeah, we need to stay away uh, from this side of the map because it's creeper there. Yeah, if we can land on any, like, if we can play underneath in the water as well, we have all ramparts. So, like, just look yeah. for anything. We just need to find anything. Like, we can play this spot, water, anything. <laughs> anything that's free. Try to find anything. Just do it for me. Do it for me right here. Let me know one. You can let them know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh... It's zero? No, no, like, two, two or three seconds. Three seconds is fine. Three seconds safe. Yeah, We're on the very edge. Just three seconds. No, 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 no. Let's go. Stand up. It's because they're far out. There's a moves fast. Look for anything free. Anything free. Okay. You're just pumping this when you see something. Left side is clear. This side is clear, guys. No? It does. What, about... Clear, no, no, no. what about this? My yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we look for. Yep. There's some walls there, but. Yeah, go for, go, for go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Land inside. We can go inside as well. Land bottom. I can't go inside. I can't. I'm in. I'm in. Break it. 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 Go through. Okay, okay. Go through. Yeah. Come in. Come in. Come in. Yep. Let's play the big thing here. Yeah. On stage. Safe on me. Safe on me. Safe on me. Come in. Come in. Come in. Let's play the big thing here. Yeah. On stage. Close this door. Close this door. Just hold. Just hold. Just hold. I'm gonna scope it here. Use my, use my shield. Yeah. Get behind it, get... Play the middle, play the middle, nothing else. Yeah. yeah, this corner is not safe there. No, just play the middle. Middle is completely safe. We're good, we're good, we're good. I'm blocking off this side of the door, boys. We're still in, we're still in. Yeah. 
I'm a uh, full ten. You guys need uh, five and five. Drop me six house. Drop me six house. Amazing showcase here from Alliance to get into the final circle. Nine squads left and a rampart in position. That's a scary thing to think about, Tiff, but Alliance, they're scary anyways. Vex Gaming showing that they can hold down what they own, and it's going to be a challenge to take them out of that high ground as well. 30 points for them and moving into the fifth place position. I mean, they're just playing so incredibly well. I think Stormpoint might be their stronger map. You heard Graceful kind of talk about it, right? They play Edge on World's Edge. And I was asking, I was like, bro, they said they were going to start playing Zone more. But look at what happens when they do play Zone. Nine eliminations already. You've got Matafe kind of anchoring their spot in the building with the Jenny, with the fences. And you've got Tyler and Unlocky that can kind of leave the nest and essentially go pick up those KP, return back home to Matafe and be like, look what I did. Are you proud of me no i'm just kidding but for real that's kind of what it feels like to me and it might just be that way and a lot of pride on the line here there's no jokes about it these teams know it's day one we're setting the tone and vexed alliance they've had different approaches to how they want to do this but phoenix legacy have kind of shown up in a way much bigger than we might have expected alpha draft imp and sabs holding down that low ground still three teams at that building and on the outskirts now we've got start a fight and Blast has himself a Kraber. That is a good proposition, but he's got to make it out alive first. Bangalore Ultimate about to hit as well. It's not looking good for start a fight. Wicked goes down. Blast takes some more damage. Can he fire back? Can anything happen? They're just going to play around the shield here, but they're in a tough spot. Yeah, getting stunned left and right from the missile swarms connecting. You're stuck between a rock and a trident, and it's just very unfortunate. You just wanted to cheer the pressure and have the teams already kind of in the zone fighting, and heroes getting kind of forced to take specific maneuvers thanks to that kind of rogue thermite, and they are so low on health. Can Clemmy and Babylon's find some success here. You got Vex just above you that's looking to just absolutely annihilate you, but the piercing spikes forcing whichever team is underneath there into Ooh. that. They're not going to be able to move, but Clemmy not going to be able to survive the onslaught from that that is Vex and even Alliance. Now Heroes eliminated. Vex going crazy, and yes, we mentioned start a fight in a bad spot. They died immediately. Then we saw Heroes not be able to make it. Those three teams still in the mix. Phoenix Legacy, Alliance, and of course Vex. Alliance and Vex going at it a little bit. Alliance clean up Matafe, and that is one big kill to try to cement themselves here in game number four, the first game on Stormpoint. Rampart Walls, it got him to a top three, a top two. Last game, can it get him a win here? Maybe one of the first Rampart wins we've seen as a legitimate pick across this meta. And that would be exciting. All the theory crafting would be worth it. But Tifa, still a long way to go. Five squads left, Phoenix Legacy, SMS still in front of them. I mean, the walls, these walls that they are putting up are so beautiful, right? And you can see Yuki has the Sheila available to them. Unlucky and Tyler taking to the skies to see if they can find a more safe position here in this endgame and give them kind of that lay of the land of where every other team is. They are going to go for kind of that oob play to try and drop down safely so you're not going to necessarily hover on down. And they've decided this rock is where they want to go. We last saw Startify utilizing the Trident for some cover and kind of cleaning that out and finding oh. KP might be what is going to be best for them. Alliance off screen. Okay. Absolutely okay. impaling and Sivan from Morningstar oh. trying to survive with all the damage from the back. Oh my goodness. It was a sweet swap there. I'm telling you from Vex. I don't know if they're going to be able to clean it up. They can't. It's just a push from SMS and it's Alliance who come in with the Rampart. Alliance take game four and they prove yes, this might just be the counter to the meta everyone was so scared of. What a game from Alliance. What a performance here in game four. I'm just curious how everyone that is watching this feels about it. Do we have Rampart enjoyers out there or Rampart haters? Are you, I know for a uh, fact every time I hear that Sheila kind comes. of ramp up, I'm running, and you can't run on this, but I'm like, I'm, I'm having trauma associated with that Sheila noise, and Yuki is just out there. We saw when they were taking that building positioning rain day, they kind of flew in yeah. from the Valkult. He kicks in the door. The first thing you have out is his Sheila just ready to destroy all the fences.
I know. I loved it. It was, it was, it was, I mean, just a great moment. I felt like I was watching a little bit of Terminator or something, but we got to say they certainly terminated the rest of that lobby. Let's bring Vicky back in. She's been taking a break, but watching this one, Vicky Rampart comes through Alliance have shown this could be the counter to this meta that we've been seeing. First off, that first game on Storm Point was great. I'm all up for the chaotic 50-50s, by the way. KCP came out on top after that one, but my goodness, the Rampart. You guys asked for Rampart enjoyers? I know Dia is somewhere plotting yeah. out here. <laughs> I know he's happy. I know he likes the, the Rampart. I know he likes the Watson, but my goodness, Alliance have found the answer. They came out in second place, game number three, and then take the dub on top of that for game number four. So you already know that they are reaping the benefits off of using that Rampart. Yeah, and it's building space where there isn't space, right? It's building cover and, and creating zones. It's exactly what the Watson does. But there's this unique element of the Sheila, which, Tiff, you keep mentioning. That's this incredible offensive firepower that directly helps them counter what is being basically the the deterrent for all these other teams of what catalyst is slowing people down and forcing them to do rampart has given them another way to look at things and it's been great to see i think it's even surprised me i thought three games for sure surprise they're playing it for a fourth game they might play it all six games here and why not I think so. I think they need to keep doing it. I mean, you think back, we talk about the dark veil, the cat ult, the cat wall. They were able to spray and pray that Sheila through the wall and take out KCP over on World's Edge. So you saw the, the value in it there. We saw the amped cover value in that end game in North Pad. And I just feel as if you kind of have to trust Hackus at this point, right? Yeah. I was talking to some members of Alliance yesterday and they were like, this is his choice to kind of implement the rampart and try to utilize it to try and combat some of the slowdown nature that you call out right that dark veil it slows you down by 15 percent mm. if you walk through it and you're blinded for seven seconds i'm slowed down blinded and now i've now i've got a sheila coming at me like <laughs> that's not a good combo no slow down blinded and a sheila that's i mean you know it's not I, I i don't think we anybody anybody wants to deal with that i certainly don't and i also think too like let's just be realistic about this element everyone is trying different things but whenever you see something work then it adds another layer of legitimacy when it was all just talk when it was talk and it was an idea it's one thing when it's actually cemented in in winning and maybe even now on the course of winning day one that's a story but is it more of a story too of the alliance that was meant to be at land back we talked about super sub mandy but it was always about how good this young effect was fitting in with yuki fitting in with hockey's Yuki got even better at land. Hockey's has been one of the top players, and now Effect showing up right where we expected it. This alliance is scary. And as yeah, we take a look here at these highlights as well, I mean, Tiff, this was also a, a game that ended with a lot of teams knowing where that zone was early and, and setting up. Yeah, I think that's kind of mission critical, right? You've got the controller legends out there, that class that gives you the ability to scan ring consoles. And just talking to Sabs, that's what they were talking. Their storm point gameplay, land checkpoint, scan a ring console, make that early rotation move. And it's been paying dividends for Phoenix Legacy who have been making those early rotations. And then Graceful, kind of shining some light onto Vex playstyle more so into the roles of playing that heavy zone on storm point and the ability for them to keep out all the other teams. And it just goes to show you how strong that really is, Vicky. And it's just been a joy to see. Yeah, I believe they had like 11 KP by the end of that game, but their positioning was fantastic. Cleaning up one after the other. Well, look at this. It looks like a work of art. Picasso up with the Watson pylons up on the high ground. Alliance then coming in from a low ground. But talking about position, it was Alliance that not only put their backs against the wall of that same building without having to overcommit, but they secured it. This is terrifying too. You know that Sheila's coming out from Yuki. You know anybody that's underneath this ground is going to be in the line of sight of that rampart. And Morningstar also being able to really come out on top after this game. But again, Alliance with their timing on the third party is what allowed them to secure the final game. It was tough to seeing Vex try to make that run. When they lost Matape, that was really the issue. Mm. So they had to fight it as a two. And then this is where we actually saw, I want to say it wasn't SMS. Uh, it might have been start a fight. Yes, it was. Die. And so it was a tough spot. That rock really wasn't a lot of room to hold. And you can see here in match four, there was a big, big showcase 
for Alliance in their composition. But I don't want to just make that the story. We know Effect is back. We know they're playing a new comp. Morning Stars have a nice pop-off game, a game we hadn't really expected from them. They're showing up here. Effects Gaming continue to improve. In fact, second place overall in terms of points. But again, Phoenix Legacy, Dynasty, good showings from them on the day. And as we take a look at our bottom 10, it will give us an idea of maybe who had a tough storm point pioneers i thought they had a tough one but again six game six points two back-to-back -back fights didn't work out with vex but they will be okay it's really a sin tiff i'm looking at game of drones who have gone out really early as well danish eternal who had a great game before maestro too kind of fell off here can they keep some consistency heading into game five and six it's really tough when you see Ascend kind of on that lower half of kind of the series or the match results, right? You think about the team that, in a sense, in split one pro, se like pro league season, it was the most consistent team out of EMEA. So to find them having a little bit of struggle here, trying to adapt and keep up with the way that people are playing, you know, they are still on that Watson crypto and it's tough, right? Typically it yeah. would be really, really strong for them, but moving into these legend changes, it may not be kind of paying off for them just yet. But it's a great point that you mentioned too, like things can change with the legend changes. They can be negative, but they could also be positive and they can give someone a little bit of room to run that they wouldn't have had before had the meta been so consistent. Maestro, Eternal, Phoenix Legacy, those are my three standouts today of teams that I think are showing a lot of improvement here and really questioning uh, and challenging for that top five. Of course, we've got some of the leaders in the lobby from Alliance, from Fire Beavers to KCP. They know what they're doing. They're at the top. Can anybody stop them? We got our first Rampart win in split two, and it was a fun one. Will Alliance go back to back or someone else take down the throne? We'll find out as game four, excuse me, just finished and game five and six are coming at you. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everyone. It is the Apex Legends Global Series match day number one for the EMEA region. I'm Spider Tip. Joined alongside me is Vicky Kitty, my co caster for the day. We are bringing you all the action. And we've got two more maps on Storm Point for you. And it's kind of crazy to think back on the journey that we've kind of had thus far, Vicky. Yeah, it's also crazy to see how a lot of these teams on the lower half of the overall leaderboards were able to rise up after that one game of Storm Point. That does highlight how some of these teams feel a lot more comfortable on one map versus the other, what that could do in the overall standings. I mean, Morning Stars, before that game, I believe they were sitting all the way in 20th. Now have moved their way up to 10th after getting second. So how is this going to shake things up as we still have two more games on Storm Point for the day? 
Yeah, you look back at Fire Beavers, they kicked off map number one with 30 points on World's Edge, and that's kind of been carrying them forward at the top of the leaderboard. But moving into the last two maps of the day, that's not going to keep them there. They're going to have to show out and do something in match five or six to keep on the very tippity top, which is exactly where they want to be. But teams like Alliance, they finished second on a map in World's Edge, now finally getting that first map win. A 21 point game. They're doing what they need to do. You're right. The, things are starting to heat up. They're learning the lobbies and the play styles of all these people. We know we can't account for scrims and how things are going to work out, but I mean, this is the experience that we needed. It's absolutely huge. And we actually do have another Western Circle. May not be jumping all the way up towards North Pad by those rocks, but this is going to be an interesting one because of all the water in the middle. Sometimes the Prowler Den there to actually try to grief you too if you're in the middle of trying to rotate. But we saw what happened between Dynasty, KCP. They're going to start making the rotation on the other side of Mill. They're going to be able to also get some information on where the players are currently located on the rest of this map before they decide where they want to rotate. Fire Beavers being another one to have access to that information information are going to be able to rotate out of Sinote Caves as well as using that replicator that's to their south. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, you've got Dynasty that lands technically, quote unquote, that bean-esque area, that mountain that's shaped like a little bit of a jelly bean that some people have coined that POI's name. They have the IMC Armory there and a beacon as well. And with KCP at the mill kind of already starting that rotation out, which is interesting because knowing that Phoenix Legacy is an early rotating team, they're making their way to the south straight into KCP. But let's jump on board with our map four winners of Alliance. You know their drop spot POI, it's Lightning Rod. They've kind of not changed anything here. It's a really interesting POI, such good loot. You have crafting for the most part. Yeah, right there. Ring console available to them. And in a top down map, from north to south, the rotations from northern POIs are so much easier. Oh yeah, especially when you have a Valkyrie too with that Skyward Dive could cover so much land. I remember that before uh, Valkyrie um, Skyward Dive was nerfed in terms of the distance, she was able to cross that entire east side of Lightning Rod through the rocks and you will find yourself right back in Fish Farms. Still could cross a lot of distance even coming out of that north side, but Alliance have a bit of ways to go here. They can start making the rotation from Lightning Rod all the way to the west side. Know that SMS is in that direction, I believe, to the right side of Wall. A lot of other squads are already making their rotation on the edge of that next circle. I just love looking at the Seer heirloom. Just you were talking about it oh, earlier, yeah. how they kind of <laughs> cut off the rows. Just super beautiful here. But QR1C, they've Wait. actually elected to put Yushako on the rampart as well. So typically we saw, you know, in split one, it was Aurora breaking out Catalyst before people even in NA started to question it. But now Yuki on the rampart. 2R1C on the rampart using that amped cover to fortify the building just on the outskirts of the IMC armory. It's so much easier to shoot through this, be having the rampart on your team because tell me how annoying it is trying hmm. to find like a good headshot through a wall because you have to destroy the wall first. Yeah, not only that, I feel like I'm just living out my nightmare. Meanwhile, Kashera is popping off in the feed, making sure to get that dirty onto Alpha Draft here. But 2R1C is a team that's currently sitting in 13th overall after their performance on World's Edge in that first game on Stormpoint in game number four. And look who's coming through. Tip, you highlighted it perfectly with Rain Day. Vex Gaming is such a scary team overall, but even scarier on Stormpoint. They managed to take this building right now, and they're just trying to see if anybody's hiding right now here, too. If they didn't pick up anybody, it looks like they got this entire building cleared out now they could see what's happening on the other side of the army it was a send that was actually neighboring them they could see that they have already lined up the walls underneath with the watson fences but a send is not going to be moving anywhere they do really like hanging out in that building especially if there's sometimes a circle beacon that they could use i'm not too sure if there is one right there but kashira gets another knock another knock with the set no he's been on fire so far with this Oh, this is not good if you are Fire Beavers or a fan of them because they're on the outskirts of the IMC Armory. And right now, Kashera with that Sentinel are just absolutely punishing them. We saw just how getting that opening knock and Kashera is just taking his drone out there to find some more information or maybe to EMP them and kind of to tear them from getting healthy again. There goes the EMP, very unfortunate. And you gotta watch Lufka, right? Putting him on the Valk allows him to kind of go forward and maybe grab some damage, return back to where the Watson is and kind of anchoring that position. But he should have the ability to kind of poke out, find damage, go back in. 
especially with this play style too we talked about it a little bit when we highlighted ascend you can see their vision getting blocked out by the bangalore that's on the other side of the building by vex you got the digi threat though in the hands of kashira and with the way that lufka plays very aggressive but can pull back immediately and what better legend to have lufka on than valkyrie especially when you want to rely on the skyward dive in case you want to reposition but i think ascend has this not just locked down but they have a really good prediction on where the circle is going to be pulling and in the case that it still pulls more so to the north side by where they're going to be rotating past the mill they can try to take a 50 50 rotation maybe take a more back end rotation towards the line of sight of barometer yeah and i mean just looking at vex changing up their legend composition moving into storm point it shows you because it's going to allocate with their play style you're pulling one of your fragging members off of catalyst and putting them on bangalore which is going to allow them to find free but lcdf they are in trouble right now losing out on one member now yolu and aimbot are kind of trying to navigate this wall here we knew there was an early contest but now they're trying to make that rotation and a lot of teams have congested here able to grab the banner but you're going to get tagged up as a punishment for that you still have the beacon here available you might as well just stick it now and let those other teams nearby fight so you can try and reset as quickly as possible yeah i believe lisita the front also rotated away from north pad here yeah they have the banner but game of drones is actually putting in so much pressure with the charge rifle i'm not too sure if it's not just rondon who has a charge rifle but it's the fact that they can try to circle keep this squad they know now their force of plays out as a duo they wanted to see if maybe they wanted to stick that res on the beacon but they know otherwise that they're not going to go for that they're just going to end up rotating far away is game of drones going to chase them is that the call because they're right next to that next circle and they can hold this north side away from other teams that may be rotating away from north pad or checkpoint i mean game of drones lands at the wall so they're still going to be just in this vicinity sitting on triple blue they do have a good chunk of health available to them and the zone isn't too far behind them so they have the wherewithal to kind of stay here and punish that team they want to make sure that even though they've already got an opening knock they had the finish yolu also down so they just need to find one meanwhile ascend going big and taking out reply totem that may be my on the other side, but Ascend gets pinged off the crevices of the wall. It's Vex Gaming. Whether it be smoking out their line of sight or waiting inside of that building, they put in some of that extra pressure, and instead of fully sending it, thanks to the fact that the Watson fences are up, they end up just backing away, too. They're also getting pressured by another team in the distance, so Ascend gets to see another day. Yeah, I mean, Fire Beavers, we know that they're in this vicinity thanks to Kashera taking an early knock onto one of the members, possibly have already had a nice full reset, but Vexed is continuously pressuring Ascend, and knowing that Kashera is on the crypto and there's a beacon nearby, they should be able to utilize the drone to go ahead and hit that res. I don't think that player will survive regardless, but destroying this gen is going to allow them to get in. Sure, do you have nades? Can you spam them up top? Oh man, this is such a difficult spot. I mean, the gen is also right there. Vex Gaming, though, they were baited and the wall of fences is what was the issue right now. Vex Gaming wanted to get ahead of themselves and that was the cause of their demise. Ascend, not only hold down the fort, look at post kill's health right now. They lost out on Lufka and now with post kill being won and Kashira going to be able to get the res thanks to the crypto drone, things couldn't have worked out any better than for Ascend. I mean, let's talk about this. Watson is dangerous for the fact that she can hold two ult excels in one spot. You pop one ult excel, you get the Jenny back. You destroy one, you can immediately plop down another and ascend, knowing that they've played Watson and Crypto so often. It was just beautifully done. Now they're going to go ahead and stick the res off onto Lufka, try to get them back, and a plethora of loot available for Lufka to get back up to speed. I'm not over the last fight. That was absolutely insane. Amazing placements of the Watson fences there to block out the rotation through the stairs, even the gen being up there. That's why they didn't want to send out the grenades yet there too, but that was even better for Ascend in that case because the grenades would have just spelled doom for what was left of Kashera too. So now we get to tune into what's going on on the other side of the map. Game of Drones, they've successfully made the rotation away from the wall after pressuring out that previous squad that we were able to see earlier. Now they're going to be able to next plan where they want to rotate through that next choke point but look how many teams have already taken real estate inside some of these buildings so many congestion spots right here to the south side of mill i mean look this is going to be really tough and there's a lot of different kind of ending games here that typically pull to an open position 
So very, very tough in Horizon Union. I kind of like chilling here, but the, the horrible part about being here for too long or all the teams that are going to be rotating in from the north side and they're just going to be collapsing around you can get a lot of information maybe try to get some eyesight onto them but at what point do you decide we need to take a building we need to reposition ourselves because we can't hang out here that long they do have a catalyst which typically can excel in open areas using the Dark Veil to try and cut off your LOS while moving but you can also really utilize a building to try and reinforce that Spuds, though, taking their time and playing on the outside of these buildings, playing on top of this hillside like Horizon Union. They're getting pinged by a squad in the distance with the 30-30, but holding this spot early could be doomed for the teams that are in the middle of rotating to the south side of that map through that choke point, because you could find yourself pinched. Foot Esports, though, has other plans, and they are taking their ride right into the outside of Mill, playing from the outside of the circle, but at least on the safety of the inside of these Mill buildings before they manage to reset. Yeah, Foot Esports on your screen, still just on the outskirts of the Mill. Like you said, they're kind of making their way through. We haven't really gotten to see too much action out of them. Noth and Taylor, you know, in split one, they had played with Kuhia. They brought in Liffin here for split two. And I just want to see more. It's hard, right? When we're on the broadcast, we see what is in front of us only. And it's kind of like, what have they been doing off screen that might have shown the success to this teamwork? But I'm excited to see what happens on this engagement with Danish, right? Sitting on triple purple, just kind of waiting on that outer edge. And if you get on the high ground here at the mill, it is so tough to take a fight against someone on height. Sifo Esports having to reset themselves. Maybe trying to barricade the door. There you go from Noth. He's going to try to pop the med kit. Seer ult for Seer ult. This is what we see right now from Seer always. It's Danish that has the high ground. You're talking about the high ground advantage right now. See the horizon Q coming in too from the other side. It's waiting to see for an opportunity if they could get on the high ground here. But it was Danish that took the high ground first over the squad that's playing on the low ground. They're inside that next circle now with the entry of the black hole. It's going to be able to pull everybody inside. Here you go. Take one of these with the arc star. He's got the hemlock ready too. Beautiful combination with the arc star but it's a trade for trade on Knox. i mean that was really smart i know i was talking about horizon kind of being more of a refragger or anchoring type of character now but bab is utilizing them as that entry fragger throwing the black hole in frick's going to fall as well so now young hong kong taking ring damage definitely needs to focus on prioritizing that heal at what point do you say this is kind of chalked and i just need to play my life you are going to have the information with that passive oh. but it's pioneers making this so incredibly difficult they walk in and just clean up the likes of food spearing them while they're out of here too cleaning up whatever was left here afoot and now pioneers they know that there is somebody else in the area they got an ASCII on that seer it looks like they found the straggler real quick gotta do a 360 so that way you can make sure you're looking in the right direction as the seer heartbeat center is going to be able to come out they find that one last straggler where can he go some missed shots with the 30 30. Have no fret. They are getting poked and prodded from just inside the ring as well. So they've already caught the attention of other teams, but it's Alliance oh. just on the southern end of checkpoint through these three buildings, cleaning up what is left of game of drones and kind of holding this area. They are going to have to fight their way in. Now, granted, with that ring starting to close, I think that moving southward could be the best, or they could elect to go ahead and go around. Oh, will we see a Valkult here? Let me see here. Effect, what are you going to do? And honestly, I want to watch more of Effect's POV at this point in time. Yeah, I'm wondering what their next plan is going to be right here, too, especially looking at this weapon load at the Nemesis, the PK at the ready, KCP now holding the high ground of Mill currently right now. Love to see what I'm seeing here for a lot of these squads. And just to highlight what's at stake here, our top three squads are incredibly close with one another. You can see Fire Beavers, Pioneers, Alliance, I believe. Alliance leading the way with 47 points, Pioneers with 45, Fire Beavers with 44. Just to show how close it is so far, looking at where that next map is going to be taking us, Tiff. Ooh, KCP holding out the mill. Ascend with Lufka back, still kind of playing this building, but they are going to have to move soon. And now they've got to contend with the teams that are just in front of them. Lufka just ADS prepping to see if someone's going to push down on that staircase, but taking the high ground and having to play from the second story of this building. This is going to be an incredibly tough positioning, but with that ring already closed and they're in just a little bit, they should be golden. Let's see Ascend's next move here. They have the information of the Crypto Drone. Gets destroyed real quick, it looks like right here too, but they're gonna be patient. 
Look how many shield swaps they have to work with as well. Looking down the stairs, they can hear the rest coming in. What is Ascend going to do? They toss out the grenade, obviously out of the line of sight of the gen, so that way you can find at least some sort of space. But they do manage to get the rest. Successful for Dynasty playing off the low ground. No go knockdown shield, still takes more damage, more information that Tolkien was not able to reset. Every time I hear gold knockdown, the only thing I think of is that play from Gone Beret at playoffs where they just oh, yeah. kind of chained it together. It was one of the most fantastic things I've ever seen utilized, but it is so prevalent to help those resets, especially when you're hard on that edge and you're going to have that ring at your back. So the question for Dynasty and Ascend here is, they're going to contend for themselves. Meanwhile, Kashir is out spotting where he wants to take his next move, right? Utilizing that drone, calling out the teams in the nearby vicinity. And it's like, what is our rotation pattern going to look from these buildings? But everyone else is going to be a little bit of chaotic because with the team playing those rocks, if you've got mid range to long range, you can just shoot down on all these teams making their way over. And let's not forget who rotates from Sinote Caves to right to the north side of them is Fire Beavers. So with Kashir having the information which squads could be trying to take that same spot that he's eyeing right now. That's why the Crypto Drone is so important. Without having to overextend yourself, taking a Hail Mary Skyward Dive, they want to guarantee and make sure that where they go for this next circle, because they got to start moving now in less than three seconds, that they at least have some space. The Trident right there! Oh, he's an escape artist! Lufa is out of there with the rest of Ascend! I mean, just a couple of rocks deteriorating away from them. They can play the low ground here and really hide themselves from the team that is on the top. Because if you're up there, you do not want to give up that high ground. But it's Alliance hitting that Valkyl, the Skyward Dive coming in, immediately throwing down the exhibit to get the information and challenge who is going to be around them. Now down to 10 squads remaining. Oh Amped up cover going out from Yuki. I can only imagine what he's trying to do there. Effect is trying to play a scene out of the Matrix right now, dancing around these grenades. They keep getting tossed. You would think that it's a fuse. Look at this right now. Alliance, Yuki falls low. He gets sent down. That's absolutely huge, but at least with the barrier that they can use for extra cover. They have the gold knockdown shield, so Alliance should still be okay. Ooh, it's nasty that oh, from no. KCP grabbing that frag grenade. I did see a knockdown shield, but KCP walking up on this, the confidence that they have. Yeah, they just had an immense amount of damage come down that's going to kind of put a thorn in that push. And now you can see another member is coming down from high ground, but a bow check bow trying to follow up. And it is not going to pan out for the pioneers. They will fall to Alliance because they had already reset Yuki thanks to that gold knockdown. There's no way this is happening right now. We saw it happen for game number four, Tiff, but it is happening again. Alliance, Yuki being on the rampart. Now they took control over the high ground. The back and forth between Alliance and the communication must be on another level. We did see the Rolling Thunder coming in, but you can see the respect from all these teams holding their respective quarters for this next circle. There's a lot of players that have their eyes on this. Now you gotta think we're doing back-to-back -back match days. So everyone in group C is watching this, trying to wow. figure out what is happening, how things are panning out. Alliance sitting on triple red. Now your leaders for the day currently with 54 points. You can see that just above their names. Fire Beavers, the previous leaders of this match day, still up and Adam holding on to that rock. But look what's happening behind their positioning. You have Horizon, you have Outplayed, you have Ascend, and then you Shaco and Co. But Alliance sitting in such a good positioning, having high ground, knowing that they are going to force everyone that is on that other side of them in. The question is, where is that pool? Because they have to make their way over. So the question, how do you, how do you, how do you get over to the fire beavers? They don't have a Bangalore to cover their their smokes with them just transcending through this open area. They don't have a catalyst wall. Fire Beavers not only have nine impulse on the Bangalore as he's beaming down with the havoc. Now he swaps over to the guard. He's got the gold light mag right there ready for him. He tried to rotate around, but you heard the windup. You hear that Sheila coming in, and they get shut down immediately as Alliance gets taken down. Fire Beavers were in such a good position, and catalyst wall now coming in from the low ground. It's gonna let them know which of these other teams are trying to go in for a clean rotation. Yeah, having high ground there was beautiful for our lines until you had to rotate to zone. And now Fire Beavers taking a split approach to this impulse on the right rock. Oirain and Taskmaster kind of playing to the left side. Now you've got to turn your attention to all the teams that are just kind of collapsing on each other. Ascend able to play a fence, utilizing the Watson fences in the pylon there. And then Amped cover on the inside. That's right, 2R1C. Ushako is on the rampart as well. 
Yeah, with Uchaku, we talked about it earlier too. With Uchaku being still on the rampart, still taking control over this building, they have not left from this spot. You're seeing the lack of attachments out here, but they were able to boost up those evil shields. Hierarchy was able to get a gold evil shield, and now they are setting up this airfield coming out right now over by the other side. Nobody could contest them other than them trying to poke and actually break through those walls, but ascend. Now with these other squads, Horizon on the other side, Fire Beaver trying to take different off angles. This is going to be an insane final circle. Oh, this is everything that the Fire Beavers needed. We asked coming into maps five and six, could they put in the work? to find themselves back at the top. We know they had a 30 point game in map number one. We know they are incredibly aggressive and have the wherewithal to be able to do that. And now it's like shooting fish in a barrel for fire beavers as two R one C and Ascend are forced to essentially pit to the death here on the outskirts. Ascend playing off the other corner though. They can't leave this side because even though the circles are gonna be forcing them to move over to the other side, fire beavers are gonna be waiting for them right there. Two R one C gets eliminated getting out of that line of sight of that seer tactical it's horizon that are taking control of fire beavers attention right now and fire beavers are trying to move in for the ability to contest for this third party they have all the gods but they had the high ground and now they're going in with the proper timing after horizon you get taken down I mean, you see the exhibit go out and fire beavers just immediately collapse around them. They want another win. And just like that, fire beavers take home map number five. They were in literally the most godspot position that they could hold in. And with this circle pulling right next to their POY and Cenote Caves, that was such a good patient play from Fire Beavers. The only other team that they had to worry about was Alliance, which they took care of because that was going to be the team that was going to rotate right behind them. Well, I mean, this is a pretty special uh, type thing, guys. I, I got to say, Fire Beavers do it again. Two wins on the day. That typically means you're going to be in contention or you're going to win the day. We still have one more game to play, though. And three of the other teams that could have won, we're talking about KCP, we're talking about Alliance, were taken down, essentially, through that Fire Beavers run to give Fire Beavers that God spot. But I got a question. Is it, is it a God spot? Is it really? Or is it just Fire Beavers making it a God spot? If they seem to be so successful in this type of kind of clearing out their backside and making the situation perfect for them that – you know, they seem to be making anything work. And that's the sign of a team that's really, really dangerous in late game. Yeah, like you would think, right? Alliance making that move onto the rock prior to that zone kind of right. pulling straight towards Fire Beavers, giving them that high ground, forcing all of the teams below Ascend to R1C, Horizon. They had the worst side of the ring pull. They had to pull directly to Fire Beavers and they were just sitting there like, yeah. okay, we've got this. We know we are confident. Our team synergy is absolutely impeccable. And I was speaking to Oyre and he was like, yo, we're not working on any micro details. We don't have anything to really improve on. Our right. team synergy is great. We want an easy qual to land. We're going to win the regular season <laughs> and then we're going to win playoffs and champs. They were uh, so confident and look at today. Listen, they were confident enough to, when we interviewed them last split, they trolled us. Okay. So that's telling you <laughs> that it's confidence right there. Let's go ahead to the highlights and see this game unfold from the beginning to the end, because it was a great game. I thought it might've been alliances Vicky to lose after they took down KCP with the ridiculous amount of KCP grenades that they had to withstand. They somehow do. But it ended up being Fire Beavers all along. Walk me through the start of this game because Ascend was even involved here until the, the final moments. Ascend had not moved from the spot for a while. I believe it was Vex who had landed inside the building. Yeah, Vex right here who tried to push right through these Watson fences. This was insane. I was sitting on the edge of my seat, gripping my seat at the same time. And it was crazy to see how they wanted to try to push into that. But the amazing counterplay from Kashera and company was able to really clutch out that fight. Pioneers 2, perfect timing on the third party. They cleaned up what was left of those two squads squads there too. Alliance, I thought, was able to carry on that momentum to the very end. But it's what Tiff said. When you have the Rampart, the Seer, and the Valkyrie at this point in time, what do you do? You don't have a Bangalore to close in that yeah. gap between themselves and Fire Beaver. They don't have a Catalyst Wall to block the vision of what Fire Beaver was looking at. Meanwhile, Fire Beaver, like game number one when they won, played right into their strength with the Bangalore smoke. Beautiful stick right there too from Alliance. They were looking fantastic, but it's just an unfortunate rotation that put themselves in a very vulnerable situation against Fire Beavers. Could you, could you have Skyward Dove? Is, is there somewhere to go to buy some 
time, I, it probably was just stuck between a rock and a hard place or stuck between a bang and a beaver there, and as uh, Tiff likes to say. And I, I think it agreed. <laughs> Fire Beavers really didn't close it out, though. And this is what I think was surprising to me is Sin were not in a bad spot. I think they made the right decision. They took out as many kills and got KP having to face Horizon Union, but Fire Beavers, they did not let them slip. Bang ultimate hits from Taskmaster, uh, from IT9 Impulse, Taskmaster OJ Rain ready to follow up with the EVA 8s immediately. No chance for Ascend to even respond, and that'll do it. Two games, one out of five for Fire Beavers, and that has put them in a great position heading into game six. First place, we'll have to see, but mm. Tiff, so far so good with 20 points in that one. I mean, look, that's not bad at all. I feel like if you can hit to the upper 20s or like once you get into the 20s for a win, it's it's great. Like that's exactly what you do. But you mentioned all the eliminations that Ascend was able to pick up. They went out in second and almost just as many points as Fire Beavers. But you can't even not talk about Horizon Union and Alliance. The Skyward Dive play that they made to push on to Morningstars and take that fight against the Pioneers garnered them eight eliminations. So 12 points, not a bad game at all. And going into the back half, we see Maestro Gaming. They had a great start, a couple of nice performances, got us talking about them, sure, but Vexed, Reply Totem, Phoenix Legacy, teams that have had little moments. Vexed, kind of more consistent, Reply Totem, really nice early game coming in second place. Phoenix Legacy, a good mid game in between that last game of World's Edge and first game of Stormpoint. Didn't put it together in game five. That is crucial, and it has led us to our series results here. For those of you watching at home, you want to know where it stands. It's Fire Beavers, number one right now, eight points in the lead over Alliance. Vicky, talk to me. One game left, and it's uh, it's, it's pretty tight up top, but Fire Beavers making some space for themselves and they could at least breathe but not to get not to get too comfy because before this game before game number five fire beavers and alliance i believe were tied with 43 points each even with alliance cleaning up the kp that they were able to get for game number five fire beavers with that dub and the kp to their name has now been able to create that distance between themselves and second place for alliance sits but still top five vex gaming maestro gaming tied 37 points eternal right behind him with 36. this is looking incredibly tight for our fourth to eighth place squads that we currently see right now but fire beavers have built up that gap between themselves and the rest of the lobby behind pioneers well it's fire beavers with an eight point lead above second a 17 point lead above third and even more above fourth and fifth can anyone catch them well, it'd be up into the hands of KCP and Alliance to try to do so. And they've got only one more game to prove the point. Will we see the off meta? Either way, whether it's Fire Beavers skipping out on the Catalyst and running with their choice, or if it's the Rampart from Alliance making a huge statement on the biggest stage of the ALGS win, we'll find out when Game 6 comes to you right after this. Sorry, can you guys repeat that? What, can I... WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. 
Five games down, one more to go. It is match date number one for Amia here at the Apex Legends Global Series. I'm Spider Tiff. This is Vicky Kitty, and we've had the pleasure of calling all the action here thus far, and it has been an absolute fun thing to do bro i mean all the season 16 changes it's been a wild one i i'm a big fan of what we are seeing from these ramparts i feel like it's going to spread i you know we already saw it starting off with yuki uchaku joined right afterwards i mean how many more of these demon ramparts am i about to see in these lobbies i don't know but i am here for it i'm in disbelief but the squad that has been finding the most success is a team not running the catalyst running the bangalore the seer and the valkyrie it's fire Beavers out here leading the way with 63 points overall with Alliance right on their tails at 55 points. Well, here is going to be the deciding factor, right? It's already so close. And something to note is not one team is absolutely kind of running this match series. And the scores are relatively low. No one's really breaking into the hundreds like we had saw in like split one regular season. We had some days where at one point, I think 120 something was the max someone had received. That just goes to show you the level of balance that these teams are kind of challenging each other. And a lot of those teams that wouldn't have technically been deemed the powerhouses are stepping up. Also love to see the consistency out here. A lion still being able to come out on top, second overall as we get to take a look at our squads making their last landing for the day here on Storm Point. Start a fight, it looks like already trying to start a fight out here. Somebody right underneath them right here and already a purple evil shield. Nice evil shield to pick up off of the rip. This is how you do it. Danish on the underside of the building here in Cascades. It's a really interesting POI to have that 50-50 contest on playing around these buildings and the windows and trying to navigate it. Having Lackey on that horizon is going to be, I mean, that oh, Valk oh, is going to be oh. nice, but Danish taking to the skies and trying to find an early opening knock, and they're going to do just that. That was disgusting off of the grenade here too, but Danish falling incredibly low, so is Lackey. Oh, he gets stuck with the bar. He tries to get away, he tries to fly away. Wicked is right behind him. This fight is lasting a lot longer than they were expecting. It's rather dangerous to have a long lasting early fight. We've seen the teams talk about that. Now you've got the G7 scout and a Spitfire. You've got some damage there. And as soon as that player drops down, they're gonna be able to grab that knock onto light. And you just have one sliver of health and a blue shield to try and navigate this oh in a gosh. 1v1. Young Hong Kong going to take to the insides and try to heal, but then Eva 8 getting reloaded. He's going to go ahead, maybe thirst to get a shield swap, but play the knockdown. But that's no Spitfire. Way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> what a weapon to pick up off of rip okay we know we talk about some of these weapons that are so good to pick up off of rip but this is what we were worried about a fight taking this long off the very beginning is going to welcome the third party i believe it was bambino coming in right now maestro also coming out on top of the 50 50 making a little bit of a statement you know if it's not the tactical crouching it's about uh releasing your inner gladiator out here they're getting pinged though by a charge rifle out in the distance and how chaotic is this final game looking like right now, Tiff? 17 squads left, and the first circle just started closing. I just feel as if the players are starting to get a little bit antsy in a way, and they're just kind of ego challenging certain things. And honestly, the Storm Point map series has been a lot more aggressive than the ones that we had witnessed on World's Edge. So been very, very fun. Look at the circle over there towards that right side. Still kind of pulling. You can see where Phoenix Legacy has made their way over towards that IMC armory on the outskirts of North Pad and just like to the southwest of the wall. That could be where the zone is deciding to pull. See Vex also making their quick rotate right past Cascade Falls, seeing if they could find out the last straggler out here. Looking at where the circle is going to be pulling more towards the north. I'm expecting that choke point that is to the east side of checkpoint to get congested very quick. Phoenix Legacy, a team that usually plays patient, usually ready to bunker down right now. I believe sitting in 10th overall. Yes, you can see it right there with 29 points. They're looking to try to secure at least some extra KP to put themselves up in the overall leaderboard. Struggling a little bit earlier with Storm Point, but now they're out here just trying to secure one of these buildings by the Prowler Den. 
Yeah, this is really fun. Like, I was speaking to Sabs prior to this weekend, and I know when she kind of plays ranked or pub, she'll really hone in on race play, and it's fun to see. But her navigating playing Watson, a controller legend here on Stormpoint, and just watching how they fight this, that's actually going to be Horizon on the other end. They're going to knock onto Phoenix. So a draft in down as well, a 2v2 scenario. And how do you navigate closing the distance? They've got Watson fences out. Sabs going to fall as well. Now Imp last alive to make this kind of work. But with Alpha Draft being full, they don't have the banner available to be recovered. And all the teams in a nearby vicinity, not a position you want to find yourself in. Yeah, that's why Imp decided to just take a step back. Look at the double exhibition right in front of Imp. While he sees the fight happening, that was a third party that actually timed to roll in right there. And in this fight with Phoenix Legacy only having Imp, you can see the shots being taken. The triple take, one more shot real quick, doesn't do it, sends out the missile swarm, tosses out the grenade. So much damage being done right here. I believe that was some damage on a knockdown shield, but what is Imp going to do? Is Imp going to be able to try to get Sabs, or is this just too much action right now with so many other teams now making their way here? does have the skyward dive should they be able to kind of finesse their way into grabbing that banner but i just don't see this being feasible unless there's going to be another team that's going to catch horizon's eye that would allow them to kind of walk up grab a res and a banner and go for a full reset this is impeccably done if they can manage this going for the res first onto sad relatively uncontested but pioneers in the nut building going crazy outplay going to fall and now nasky the kill leader as he has taken down every member of outplay the igl doing work one by one as they fall here vexed also securing that kp onto sabs was knocked originally phoenix legacy get taken out as vex made their way into that fight we knew it was gonna get hot real soon here on the block right now and ascend want a taste of the action Horizon on the other side, looking at them as they were able to restabilize inside that building. And they were able to clear out that other player. Matafi gets taken down, and that was the end of Vexed. Oh, that's going to be unique. Now Ascend kind of navigating this trench play over here. And I think they're going to be relatively safe for now because you don't really want to leave your cover and push into that. You can see LCDF inside the IMC Armory. Alliance still crafting. We know that Fire Beavers, they land in Cenote Caves. And as these rings start to pull further north for them, they have the longest rotations. And with that edge heavy play style, they're going to kind of not have to take into account a lot of these early bickering fights in a sense because they're making their way a little bit later you saw alliance still in lightning rod crafting making sure that they are fully kitted to take on the next journey of this map i like that plan too this is the final game of the day and looking at where alliance stands in the overall standings when you're just a few points away from fire beavers you want to try to play this patiently you know fire beavers are a lot more of an aggressive team in comparison to what we see from alliance especially with their legend compositions but this was going to work into their gameplay they're going to have their eo shields charge up while they start rotating from the outside of the circle coming in from the north side too so they'll have that slight height here as i said now with the nemesis uh, looking to be the grim griefers as nice wig and greek like to say the grim griefers bro <laughs> anyone with a nemesis in their hand are griefing everyone that is such a wicked addition to season 16 and i was doing some research specifically on like the damage for that weapon it's if insane. someone has a fully red shield which most of these teams will have towards that end game it will literally take four to five bursts from a nemesis fully hitting to kill someone with a red evo dependent on if they're fortified or not those are just body shots that's not taking into account if they're going to hit headshots you can kill someone essentially with three bursts on a level one or a level two helmet it's just disgusting that's the real problem out here the real problem is the nemesis let's be honest <laughs> and the way that that gun just fries you makes my eyes water kcp after taking the dub after coming out on top from that previous fight are still securing these three dome shaped DBZ buildings. Pioneers are just gonna look over at what's happening across the water. There is a team that's right above them coming outside of wall. A lot of other squads are gonna still be rotating outside of that checkpoint choke point right where we saw Phoenix Legacy fall originally. But I like this patient approach that we're also seeing from 
KCP. Look at where they're going to be standing in the overall standings. They're also the top three squad right now, sitting in third with 50 points right now. They're right behind Alliance at 56 points. So both Alliance and Pioneers are in a good spot to kind of hold back a little bit, kind of press on the brakes. And after coming out with some KP, they could just wait to see where that next circle is going to pull. Yeah, and I just think Naske, he's got really good zone knowledge, incredibly smart, which is why it was really interesting when they played at Split 1 Playoffs, when they brought in Panders, he let Panders IGL. They typically do that and will adapt to their play style, but moving back into that role for this season, I think is going to be really good to see. And I'd be curious, they're watching their back, pinging back to the wall, making sure that holding that high ground, no one can kind of rotate in behind them. But Fire Beavers, this is their typical rotation pattern for Stormpoint, right? Coming out of Cenote, hitting that IMC armory near Bean, and then making their way to the north point of Checkpoint. So they've got to figure out where they kind of want to maneuver from this hard on that edge. Still 14 squads remaining, though. Yeah, you can tell the other squads that are trying to play more on the edge. Alliance, like we saw earlier, take their time crafting by Lightning. Fire Beaver's doing the same thing, rotating through Checkpoint right now. Foot, another squad that usually takes their time. Fire Beaver's in a good spot, though, to put in some of that extra pressure. Nine Impulse says, you know, I don't even need my Evo Shield. You could ping me. It's charging up right behind me in the Replicator. See what I could do out here when it comes to griefing you and your shield cells with this Rampage that I have in my hands. Ooh, okay, let's go ahead and note this, right? Taskmaster just pinged a weapon supply bin. Now, this is something that was new towards that. It's smart loot that comes out from the weapon supply bins that Bangalore, as an assault character, has the access to. There are 23 weapons that a digi threat can fit on. And one of the spots for the four smart loot is guaranteed to be an optic. So think of the odds there. Mm, it's like a Cinderella slipper out here, making the magic happen, especially with the amount of Bangalores that we've been seeing now coming up. The change up between Bangalore and Catalyst, something that we've been seeing here. Fire Beavers, again, just taking their time, putting down some pings, prioritizing the Replicator like we saw with Alliance. Very interesting to see how these squads have slowed things down here. There is an in Ooh, navigating the trenches. Horizon still alive in a bunker on the left side of your screen. Ascend making their way through. On the right, Posty taking a little bit of a gander at the top of this rock. Little aggro Watson with a wingman. You know, I do love a good skull piercer on a wingman. It's just disgusting when you can knock people with two pops to the head. You love it. You feel yourself after that. You just think that you're just better sometimes. Horizon Union, hopefully they can find some place to land because a Skyward dive with 14 squads left in this circle is very scary. Would it be surprised if this bunker area is already taken? Time to peek. Oh, there's a Watson fence, but nobody to guard it. Okay, we take those. We take that real estate here. And you see the death box is right at their feet too. So nobody to contest them here as Horizon Union just looking to restabilize. Tough because Phoenix needs to find some loot. I saw about 40 rounds of ammo in his alternator and not a lot of attachments available to them. So if they take a fight, it needs to be quick and strategic and not drawn out because they're going to have to have time to loot up and take that next engagement. And as we're getting down to where the zone is starting to encompass a lot of these teams, they're not going to have the ability to make that happen. You're going to have to be fighting multitude of people and heroes right now getting a little bit of wild arc start going out, Seer exhibit out, so they're getting the information available to them, and Foot Esports just firing into that dark veil, trying to find anything that they can, knowing that if they do go through, this is what they need. Taylor taking immense damage, focus of attention going out and trying to get an opening knock. Clemmy down, Feko down as well, and now they just need to find one more member of the hero's roster, but getting incredibly low themselves. It can be a very challenging environment. Crazy right now. All this fight's happening on the outside of the circle. So far out. Remember, we talked about Foot Esports being one of the teams to take their time in rotating into that next circle. Usually playing on the outside right now, running into not just one squad, but two squads out here too. Beautiful performance here from Foot Esports to make sure that they can take care of that fight just as quick right now. As we can see them just try to restabilize. They got the ultimate accelerator right here too. Morning stars after losing out in Sivan, then though they're going to be able to kind of take a draw back. Look at what's happening with the charge rifle. They need to be able to upgrade those evil shields, at least with the charge rifle, since they don't have a replicator to work with. 
Yeah, morning stars. I mean, they're relegated down to a duo. 13 squads remaining and just sitting in 11th place. This could be a strong move for them to break into that upper half on match day number one. Coming from the split two qualifiers, a great showing in your first pro league match day. So I'm really excited to see if they can kind of crack that upper half. But Alliance, once again, coming in from the skies looking for we heard their comms on a rotation here when they were coming north at one point it was look for what is free and then the next thing you know we see yuki with the sheila in hand and we know kcp was holding this area of the map and it seems like they are just running into each other hackett pushing into the building but not before getting stunned by the watson fence and dell pk in oh. hand and a hemlock this is atrocious just like that kcp has shredded through alliance Serdal 8 right there, especially with the Watson fences too. Alliance get deleted in 13th, and KCP now clear the way for them to now not only get third place, but take Alliance's spot, but they need to hold this down. Got the Hemlock in the hands of Serdal. We saw the action that he was able to put down with it, but there is another team right to their north holding on to that high ground. Look, it's all about a little bit of putting the roast in the crock pot, adding some seasoning. We all saw Nasky at land when he was talking about let him cook and now Morning Stars and Foot trying to find some action, but a Bangalore smoke going to be proven difficult, but a Prowler with a digi threat in the hands of Taylor is going to be all the more advantageous. There's nothing like a seer and a cat together. This is insane with the way that Foot Esports has been able to play this rotation. They've been meeting up with teams every single time they're trying to get through these choke points. Now playing off the other side of the cat wall right now, looking to see if they have an opportunity. It's SMS on the other side currently, and with the rock also to the other side of Taylor, they could make sure that at least not if the if the wall isn't enough, they're at least out of the line of sight once it goes down from the other teams that have been fighting this entire time close to North Pad. Patience. We know that Morning Stars has been relegated to a, do a duo. The banner has been timed out. So just the Seer and the Catalyst available to them and trying to navigate the piercing spikes that are getting thrown their way. It's interesting, right? Those piercing spikes, 300 damage to the ball in the center to go ahead and get those out of the way. But are you shooting the piercing spikes or are you shooting the player? You're connecting and doing damage and it can be a little bit like visual cluttery in my opinion. Yeah, it could be a lot to work with here, too. You see the Thermite Grenade also sent down. Dynasty get taken out in the feed by Ascend. And meanwhile, Foot Esports are looking to add Morning Stars to the list. Nine squads left after coming out on top from that fight. That was nicely played from Foot. Yeah, they had the health advantage, but even with some natural cover with the rocks and the wall, they didn't want to try to overextend exactly for this reason. Here comes a third party now as Bambino tries to move into position. It's a Thernal. They have the health disadvantage here, too, but they got the high ground, and that's what matters before another team pings them down. Oh, and Foot might be able to clean this up, and they do. Taylor able to grab two out of the three members. Maestro falling as well. KCP off screen, continuing on that domination. We knew they needed to make a rotation after taking out Alliance from that Skyward Dive. So where are we moving next? Foot taking the buildings here. That IMC Armory just ahead of them. Seven squads remaining, and they are freely walking into zone with minimal cover. That was Lacita and the Frost who also were able to take some shots. Now they're the ones in trouble. It's Aimbot is the last one alive, but a nice crossfire from the other side. They get taken out. It's KCP that was trying to fight them on the other side. They lose out on member. They lose out on second one. Nasky going down. Zay's trying to run for his life, trying to duke them up in the air with the jetpacks. He's in the line of sight of another team that wants to get in on the action, but nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Look how many crossfire you saw right there at the very end with those last two teams. Look, it was Kashera eventually dealing the finishing blow to Zayn. They knew they could not leave Zayn alone as a solo in a lobby like this. We've seen what he did at the Copper Box Arena and a many oh. 1v3s when left alone, so they can't let that happen. But a Kraber in the hands of Liffin now utilizing the rock for some cover, trying to find a good LOS. Once again, just if they have the ability just freely walk in, nah, they're gonna get poked. They're they are they are found out. Foot woke up! Foot woke up! They woke up right now, gets the knock with the Kraber because they were sitting in 17th overall and in this game alone, they've been able to move themselves up in the overall leaderboard to 11th. They're looking to close in the gap. Life and I like that decision. Just disengage right there because if they do push further, even with the smoke grenade, it could be risky because Ascend is to the right and they know Ascend is holding that other side. Look at what they're able to do. Ascend is able to get another knock. Fire Beaver's right on the other side of Ascend. They're holding the other angle of where the circle is going to be pulling. That's going to put foot esports in a difficult situation.
Look at Fire Beavers, Vicky. They've got the last remaining member of two R, two one R R C. I can't even. I, how do we make that happen, bro? My, my <laughs> last out there, just vibing. Ascend, Foot. Not going to be able to live long because you can't in the middle of all of that. And now as Foot kind of renegotiates, looking for an LOS, maybe they can get an opening knock onto it. Send it Ooh. hit for two ten, but the health is two twenty five. That man is literally fifteen HP. Who's next? Who's next on the list? Here you go, cause Shara gets sent down. But the unfortunate part is, it's the Rolling Thunder that can really only do much here. They see a squad landing right behind them, trying to rotate on the other side. Noth gets that knock, but this is good here for Foot because Ascent is going to be busy getting the reg on Kashira. The only other team they have to worry about now that Horizon Union is out, I believe, is Fire Beavers on the other side, closer to Ascent. Bro, where the fire beavers at? Let them cook. Just on the north side of your screen, foot kind of looking straight at Ascend. And I feel as if Ascend, we were talking about them. One of the most consistent teams in Split One Pro League here for Amia, finally finding themselves in an end game scenario, sitting on triple red and just playing this gravity cannon, utilizing the Watts and throwing the presence. But we know that fire beavers are so aggressive, doubling down with the digi threat and the Bangalore smoke to use use it as an aggro push. This is actually insane. Fire Beavers also with the Bangalore, also with the smoke grenades. We've seen digi threats on both sides here too. Ascend. Bunkering down with these Watson fences, they were able to get that quick reset. Nobody capitalized here because nobody wants to give up their corner of this next circle. Foot is going to have to be the first squad to start rotating closer and inch their way through these rocks. Taskmaster also trying to take an off angle. He gets pinged, but Fire Beaver needs to focus down on one team right here so they're not distracted and allow Foot to rotate right behind them. Just trying to keep all that damage going on, utilizing that car for like mid range, right? Has the rampage in tow if they do need it. But listen, doing a nice cheeky push through the edge of the storm to eliminate Ascend. So now you look down, we have Fire Beavers versus Foot and Oi Rain pulling aside here with the Eva 8, grabs one. That's a knock on to Taylor and a 3v2 Vicky. They are ready to eat. Let's see what they do. Let's see what they cook. Fire Beavers with a digi threat. He beams down through the Bangalore smoke. Catalyst and Bangalore are ready not here and they control the final game. They win three games today for day one in Amiya. It's Fire Beavers as your winners for game number six. I'll say it again, two words. One animal, one element, it's fire beavers. And when I was watching scrims, and you can't take on scrims and say this is what's going to happen in Pro League and have that consistency, but they were just playing so well as a team. Of course, it's going to pay off dividends. And you're right, three wins? That's going to do it. Um, I don't think there's going to be any question as to who takes the day. Fire Beavers win half of the games in Amelia. That is one of the best starts I think we've seen to a team that had to prove themselves over the course of a split, especially after how it ended for them, not being able to be a part of the playoffs that they qualified for. They've got everything set up to be a part of split two. They know that if they can just do what they did last split, they will be there. They will have a chance to hoist the trophy. Certainly an inspire, inspiring and exciting start for Fire Beavers and Fire Beavers fans around the world. What a day. And great call, uh, ladies. I think that was one of those, those things, too, where I had hope that maybe we would see Alliance, KCP, Fire Beavers fighting in that final circle for it. But to me, it was foot esports. And you had called out a lot of their play. We watched it a lot. They kind of played spoiler to a ton of teams. The, the Kraber in hand as well, Tiff. I think there was just a dominant performance from, you know, team like Foot, who they're veterans. They know how to play. They didn't really show up much until game six, and it kind of spoiled some other teams' plans. Yeah, it was just really interesting the way that they were navigating it. I was talking to Ink. He works over on the food esports side, and we saw just how well they had performed in split one. It was kind of like it was not up to their expectations as a team, right? They made a couple little swaps. They brought in Liffin as opposed to Kohia. And now in split two, they can really focus on getting to where they want to be and the goals that they have set for themselves. And you said... They played spoiler. Well, they're practicing really well at taking those fights and they're surviving with yeah. a good ability of health left. So it's enabling them to get shield swaps, whether that is or reheal up before going on to that next engagement. Well, here's some highlights from game six as we walk you through it. Vicky.
final game of the day in EMEA. It was a good one. It was a great showcase as well. And we've been having starts to fights, whether it was start a fight or not, at the beginning of almost every game. A nice pace for EMEA today in terms of play and willingness to fight. Especially on Stormpoint, too. That's what I really like. I love to bring on the chaos. I mean, of course, the players can't say the same, but when it comes to those 50-50s, <laughs> it can get incredibly intense. But the longer they went, we saw the third parties rolling in. Here, we saw this intense play with Phoenix Legacy where Imp was left alone for a while before I believe it was either Firebeams or Vex who moved in right through that choke point so that way they could get involved in that fight, too. Before the fifth party then eventually rolled in. Pioneers held down the fort for a really long time before another team took control over that same exact spot. And with the Alliance also going down, Ascend was on the other side, and they were another team that was doing a really good job with those final circle rotations. Tiff Alliance, we mentioned that, and we haven't gotten to that moment yet, but the Skyward Dive into KCP, I mean, that was something they had done in scrims that had worked, didn't work here. You can see KCP, quick finish from Alliance, who just tried desperately to find another way to survive. Look, it was really tough. Hackus walked into the Watson fence. You immediately get that stun and that initial chunk of damage, and you're just kind of disoriented, trying to flip around, using the PK to destroy the rest of the fences and try to make that happen. And Dell was right there, ready to annihilate with the Hemlock and the PK. And then LCDF, they run over to the, the Nut building as well, just on the outskirts, and it's really tough to play. You've got so many people and here was the moment that Ascend was like, we cannot let this man live. Zane cannot go <laughs> as a solo into this end game. It is unacceptable. We learned our lesson in London. And this is Foot Esports as well, continuing to play spoiler life and coming in and just 30 points after a really, really slow start. You could tell how good of a game that was. And Fire Beavers, I'm just saying it now. They've got the best 3v3 fighting end game that I have seen so far in EMEA. Teams are going to have to figure out how to deal with them. Whatever they're doing, it is working, and it's going to have to be challenged. Foot Esports, look at that. I told you. Best, best score. I mean, they had 12 kills. They even <laughs> beat Fire Beavers in terms of score, Vicky. That is how well they played. Uh, really surprising, but also a great end for them to give them confidence heading into day two when they play. Absolutely. I mean, this is a team that was in 17th before that last game, skyrocketed themselves up in the overall standings. They needed that. They are now, I believe, in ninth place after that last game. 12 KP, but Fire Beavers played the edge of that circle and their positioning amazingly. We saw them take their time in their rotate. Tiff was talking about it, how they usually rotate out of Sinote Case to the north side. And not only were they able to put on some extra damage and also take advantage of the replicators, they are able to clean up the rest of the lobby at the very end with that 7 KP. Tough moment for Alliance there. They were battling for first, the closest away, only eight points. And they did go down to KCP. It was a bit of a trade because KCP went down to Alliance last time. So those two teams starting off a really nice rivalry here to begin as top teams in EMEA. As we go to our series results, our overall standings today, we crown by a mile the Fire Beavers, winners of the day in our split two EMEA inaugural broadcast. Pioneers come into third after taking down, second, excuse me, after taking down Alliance and Alliance rounding it out in third with the Send making a big comeback, coming from, I believe, eighth or seventh into fourth place. Maestro right behind the big shout out to Maestro, a team we probably didn't expect to be top five, but certainly are. Now, when you consider these teams and how well they played, it's more important to consider the individual players and how well they contributed, which is why each day at the end of it, we decide to talk about our monster MVPs. All right, let's kick it off. Tiff, I'm going to start with you. Who you got as your monster MVP nomination for today? Look, I know I said it three times already. Two words, fire beavers. I want to give a shout out to whoever tweeted me and said one family right back to that. Two words, one family. Just an absolute show that the Fire Beavers have put on. My MVP nod is gonna be none other than Oirein, the Recon player seer from this team. They have done so incredibly well, challenging the fact that they are not utilizing a controller character, right? They are an edge playing team, so they don't need a controller if they're not gonna play zone. They don't need the next ring information. This allows them to be hyper aggressive and just positioning themselves in these in-game fights and just picking up elimination after elimination. Why wouldn't I pick Fire Beavers? It's beautiful. They are talented. I'm ready to see them on LAN, okay? <laughs> well, the data doesn't lie on that one. 
Maybe the feelings change, though. And Vicky, I know you had some strong feelings about another player who showed up big today. Absolutely. I got to talk about Alliance. Effect, he came out and he played. Not only being on the Valkyrie, but I believe all day today, he secured himself 14 KP, working amazingly well with this Rampart composition. The rest of Alliance brought up something to the table that I was not expecting. But you know what? That's a meal for you. And that's what I love to see. Effect with some amazing shots today. He was feeling himself with that wingman and the cover fire with the rest of Alliance. You can tell that they've been able to really work together with this team composition, despite not having a, a legend that can allow them to close in the gap. That's essentially what Effect's job is with the cover fire, as well as securing the ability to skyward dive the rest of the team into a safe position afterwards. OJ Rain, Effect, great choices. Some of our top teams, but for me, I've got to give a highlight to somebody who stole our breath at the Copper Box Arena in London. That's Zane, and he has continued to showcase that it wasn't a fluke winning games today, and maybe even showing a little flash as well. A player with style and with status, and now obviously with the ability to show that he's one of the best in Europe in terms of the fragger role. Can he continue this? It seems like it's only up and up for this young star, and will this finally be the piece that KCP needs after getting close to the finals and close to winning these trophies with just a little bit missing? Is he that piece? I think Zane could be. I think a lot of people are knowing it's the honeymoon phase, so you have to watch out for this team for sure. But ultimately, I think there was a really strong performance. Zane seemed to, if anything, go only up in my book because it wasn't a matter of doing anything show-stopping. It was a matter of showing I play this role. I'm as consistent as I was at LAN. And you can see now that I do know how to win fights. And that's what I'm very, very good at. KCP, Zane has to be mine. And those have been alongside Tiff and Vicky's and my nominations for Monster Energy MVPs for today. All right. Also, you know, we look at the day and we say, what has been an impact or maybe what has been in your pack. That's right. We always have to do it. It's time for one of my favorite segments, WD Black, What's in Your Pack? All right, let's go to it. Uh, Vicky, Tiff, we were surprised. We actually thought this was going to be another weapon, but it ended up being that there was a weapon that stole the show in the energy category that isn't even the newest one, but it's tried and true. It's the Havoc Tiff, I'll start with you. Talk to me a little bit about the Havoc here and the impact today. Look, you wouldn't think of the Havoc being the what's in your pack, but it has to, it has to couple with the attachments that we utilize with the Havoc that makes it so good. The turbocharger was in the replicator for the crafting rotation today. So, of course, you can see Tyler FPS utilizing that turbocharged Havoc. You can throw down so much damage so quickly. Of course, you're going to utilize it. Well, that has been a great showcase of one of the weapons that has changed the game. It's been always a big showstopper in Apex Legends. We'll see what happens next time and next broadcast, which will be very, very soon. Uh, that's been WD Black's What's in Your Pack. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what today meant. For those who were watching, questions arose as to where did Amiya stand and also where were the stars going to show up from? We had roster swaps. Zane coming in for KCP. Max Strafe and the story of not being able to make land for such unfortunate circumstances has left KCP, no matter what, high and dry in crucial situations. Zane now filling in that gap and a top three performance should be exciting. But Alliance... They challenged the meta, ladies. They said, you know what? This is honestly not about Catalyst Seer and, and Valkyrie. It's about who can counter Catalyst Seer and Valkyrie. And we saw some glimpses of it actually end up working. But another team who maybe was the team we talked the, the least about, maybe the team we highlighted the least but we knew was always going to be a threat, were Fire Beavers. And they also went away from the Catalyst choice. So two of our top teams actually saying Catalyst is something we want to play against and around versus with. So quickly, let's let's go to Tiff and then let's go to Vicky. Just thoughts on that in terms of the non-catalyst meta, despite most of teams and me and, and I would expect in North America coming up to be utilizing that character. I mean, there's a lot of people that are pairing Catalyst with Seer. It's the two of them together that are kind of making that play style work for a lot of different teams. But then you look at Fire Beavers and they're using Bangalore, which is an assault character. That's perfectly fine. They're utilizing the weapon bins, taking into effect that they can get digi threats through looting extensively that way, but they're pairing it with Seer as well, utilizing the Bangalore smokes paired with the Seer information that you can get, and they're taking those aggressive fights because you can utilize Bangalore smoke aggressively by pushing up with a digi threat and kind of 
taking into account that you are going to win that fight because you are aggressive, you can hit your shots and you're just better. Or you can use it a little bit defensively for the rotations and trying to smoke off reses as well. And I mean, look, I, it's no surprise. Yeah. Buyer Beavers are confident and it worked out so well for them. <laughs> Yeah, and it's great to talk about. And, you know, I'm very excited, too, to get a pro's opinion on this. One of the, uh, you know, more talkative pros. I'm surprised he had a chance to, to step away from the kitchen and join us in this conversation. So let's bring in Nasky, who uh, I got to I gotta say, Nasky, what have you been cooking today? Um, how warm are your hands after rubbing them together? Which, for <laughs> what I feel, has to be three, four, five minutes before we got you on camera. Hi. Um well, I'm, I have a I have a fever. Uh, I'm I'm pretty happy right now, so you might not be able to like notice it. Uh, but throughout the day, I've been coughing and like I, I puked a couple of times because I was coughing so much. Uh, so yeah, no, my hands are very warm because I'm sweating because of the fever. So, but uh, yeah, we cooked today. We cooked. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you're not cooking for anybody else if you're sick if you're, if you're sick we do hope you get better though but uh congratulations on the performance today you guys secured second a nice kind of challenge against alliance who flew into you at the end i'll let you listen while you cough sorry again man uh i know you're, you're, sorry about you're that. not uh fully feeling great but talk to me a little bit about uh today i know zane introduced himself into the team that seems to have meshed really well give me a few thoughts on how you guys are feeling as a squad and your performance today uh well yeah um obviously we um we got zane on as a new new uh, third uh max is still as a as a fourth and obviously shout out to max we, we love that guy and uh unfortunately it didn't work out uh because of you know um the war in ukraine but uh with saying everything feels really great like uh the guy is easily the best fragger in the world like that guy will win a 1v1 against anyone uh our comps wow. whenever we go into a fight is saying go fight uh he usually gets a knock or two and then me and Don loot and then that's basically it uh <laughs> it's a pleasure playing with saying he is absolutely phenomenal well, I love that you've highlighted kind of the utilization of welcoming into your team. You mentioned the other day that you guys have adapted really well because you and Dell just have the ability to kind of create that team synergy and then work around your third. And I think it's paid dividends here. But talk to me about the ability, because not only does Zane have pop off moments today, you went heavy. I saw you team wipe. I saw Dell grab team wipes as well. So you've got to give a shout out because it's not just one person kind of making a staple you guys are all doing really well do you feel more confident because i'm assuming now you are truly the igl for this team having the ability to call the shots you're not kind of divvying that out to anyone else right uh no i am uh, i'm i'm the sole voice in the team um sometimes you like so the way i like to see the game be played is that all top teams you don't really have one igl uh you all you have three smart players that are able to understand the game and look for opportunities so what you often see me do is if i'm like busy in the back or whatever i'm doing and someone's going to close in and we need to spot a plane i'll tell i'll say sane or i'll say Serdal, uh where are we playing next zone and then i let them like decide that stuff so even though i'm the igl i'm the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the voice of the team and i make the, the decisions i'll still like it's, it's a team game right and i think anyone that relies on one guy making the, the sole calls is not very well well versed because it's a very tough task as an IGL to actually micromanage and sort out all the macro on the fly and stuff like that. I think with the exception of something someone like Sweet, Sweet is probably the only one in the world that can do that consistently. Um, I still think it's better to have all three calling stuff out, but um, yeah, that's how we do it. I really love that energy that you bring out because I'm honestly listening to you, your team comps have always been some of the most enjoyable moments of the ALGS. You guys always keep the vibes up high. Now, I'm going to bring you back to, to a solid moment, actually. You, you know, your outlook, oh, well, your outlook leaving out of land, you were down. You felt like you needed to come back to split two with something different. I want to ask you, how has your mentality been with Zayn added into this roster now that you guys are kind of finalizing where you guys, how you guys need to play around each other, as well as your thoughts on this new meta i know dell's still sticking to the watson we know what happens with between watson and catalyst what are your thoughts between a lot of teams opting either to run the bangalore or the catalyst obviously seer has been that one legend that every team has basically been rocking where do you think amia is right now when it comes to the different legend compositions um well just to first off touch on the, the first question you asked about the confidence confidence through the roof um i think losing at the land i've said this a couple of times on my uh, my stream and stuff like that and on twitter but losing that land i think in the long term is probably very healthy for us as a team 
um, because we were obviously extremely down about it. But it was like a wake up call. And um, ever since, like for the past, what, what is it now, 30 days in a row, I've been absolutely grinding, putting in the hours and stuff like that. I got a healthy schedule. So uh, confidence through the roof. Confidence really, really good. And then to answer the question about the meta, um, meta is very diverse. I love the meta right now. No More Horizon, meta is so good. As soon as we get a little tweaking on Seer, you know, that everything will be absolutely, mm, it's so good. Uh, Bangalore works, Catalyst works, uh, no beacon scan works. Um, yeah, no, it's great. All right, well, Nasky, thank you so much for those thoughts, man. And I know that you are a little under the weather. Congrats on a second place performance. We're going to let you get some rest, though, and uh, celebrate with your team on a good day. Good start to Amia. Thank Thanks. you very much. All right, Nasky. Always a pleasure to talk to uh, Vicky Tiff. It's time for final thoughts before we kind of close out the show. Uh, Tiff, I'm going to start with you just on the day. Great start to Amia. A great start indeed. And now I'm just kind of excited to see what is to come, right? We had our match day one here on Saturday. We have match day number two on Sunday. And not a lot of time for changes if you're going to be running it back and playing again tomorrow. So you kind of got to yeah. see today what works. Maybe something that you were doing didn't necessarily pan out. Or maybe you had great calls as a team and they just didn't actually pan out. Because that can happen sometimes. Just because something doesn't work out doesn't mean it was a bad call. So I feel like we're just getting started and we only have nine regular season match days for like split two so it's a journey and it's exciting to see kind of some of the teams that wouldn't be considered powerhouses starting off so strong so my, true vicky yeah my final thoughts uh, i have to i have to repeat what nasky was saying i love where the game is right now it is so yeah. refreshing i love the changes that season 16 brought in and i love to see how these pros are able to take advantage of it with some different compositions making its way into EMEA. how is that going to reflect on the other regions that we're going to be able to see today if they haven't played already and it's going to be a fantastic show to watch for na because who knows what we have on our hands for that next region man vicky doing my job for me what a perfect segue <laughs> thank you tiff and vicky phenomenal job casting but you're not done for the day you're taking a break so am i because coming up later on we've got some big guns in the house north america at 11 p.m gmt 3 p.m pacific time you know who that is it's the ceo he'll be suiting up ready to go and if you want to see a little bit of action from tsm and how they've interpreted this catalyst meta with their coach raven stay tuned because they'll be going up against this guy as well nasky said maybe the only igl that can do it all by himself he'll need his team gilder sense and nathan to show up also nathan in the thousand kill club 100 thieves backslide on mood trying to make things happen here can they do it we'll have to see the ton of competition coming up here in north america it's set to be a phenomenal day with complexity playing maybe a little bit of spoiler challenging ESM in a couple of moments. Guess what? You can find all the action, all the information on when we're starting. If you forget a tidbit or want to know all the details, check out at Play Apex Esports on Twitter and at Play Apex Esports on YouTube. You can find out all of the action that we have in the ALGS there. As always, my friends, my name is Rain Day. Remember to never give up, never stop gaming. We'll see you all for North America.